Hmm. As always, before we begin, thanks to Paizo for not only sponsoring our show here on their Twitch channel and their network, but also, you know, making the whole game that we're playing and all of this stuff and the Age of Ashes and whatnot. Mm. But some of our other partners at Sirenscape making us the neat soundboards. We're going to have a pretty high tier one today, I think, mm -hmm. because there is some... Uh, there's a lot of potential in the ambiance there. Ominous. Don't worry about it. It's probably <laughs> fine. And our newest friends over at Norse Foundry and their giant dice? endless mountain of dice. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. Upon which you can cast the code to perception for 10% off of literally everything I mean, who on the needs site. Did you say cast? Yes. I love that. Like I mean, that was magic. amazing. Well, paycheck. I, I think it's like die. casting a die. Yeah. yeah, it's a multifaceted joke. That's what I'm here for. Uh -huh. You know, it enables uh -huh. a whole bunch of different directions. But... Uh, last week, as we left off, uh, we staged a little bit of a heist against the Scarlet Triad auction they were holding within the city of Katapesh. Was that staging so much as just getting really lucky? Because we only had a general idea of what we were doing there. I mean, That's us awesome. in general. Ever, uh, that is exponentially more than you usually have. <laughs> we usually just you... wander into something that is way more Hold serious on. than we thought no, it was. No, it's not. The exponential of zero is still zero. You're an idiot. Exponential of zero is one. Is it? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know what? why, but it is. is why? Is exponent the thing you're thinking of? <laughs> no, zero to any power will give you a one, I'm pretty sure. I mean, no, I wait, zero to any power will give like, you. It's I, anything to the zero power. Yeah, I was like, you're one. definitely not uh, remembering this correctly. Zero I am not remembering it. I remember zero, zero, zero is still zero. zero. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I learned something. <laughs> Something's today. backwards up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for teaching me. I, I I taught you with my foolishness. I was very confused. Anyway, I was like, that this I is forget. gonna. I know you guys. This will devolve into math class if I don't stop it right Please now. Please stop it. So, <laughs> I felt that class. We went in, and our goal was simply <laughs> to free the guildmaster of the jewelers guild of the city. As we would like, you know, to stop the Scarlet Triad, kind of at the heart of their operations here in the main city where they operate openly, freely, and with a significant amount of power. And turning many of the other powerful cartels, the companies of Katapesh against them. You said we can't Guys, say it, so I wrote... You can't pass notes in the class while the teacher's talking. <laughs> yes, you can. Don't make Isn't that me the come whole over point there. of passing notes? <laughs> actually math class. Okay. <laughs> but point is, want guild friends. Mm. Save and we found master. every single solitary one of them Get in the jail friend. cell. <laughs> Along with, yes, some of her uh, escorts, some other things that she went with, uh, the other members of the Jewelers Guild that had been with her uh, while she was on that journey. And we ended last week. It was almost immediately, oh, literally immediately, as we escaped the Belnatal, I think it was, estate, mm -hmm. where they Something were like holding that, yeah. the auction. <clears throat> with Milk in tow, this... What? The fan's not on. Is it ever? No. Yeah. No, it's never it's on. not ever on. You're an idiot. Oh, Please be quiet. Like, I feel hot. Oh my. Are you guys okay? No. Like, are we? Hank, what is I wrong feel, with you today? I feel hot. <laughs> he so also okay. feels hot. I feel this is irrelevant. Are you guys going to be all right today? We, like, we haven't even started yet. <laughs> We're in the recap. I'll, I'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> and, like, like, you're... You, you guys all right? You're on another planet. Nick forgot how to do math. Like... Are we all right? Like, we, do we need a minute? <laughs> For exponents, that's like at least a little bit above elementary school. I don't. I Nick, can't please really get off of it. Anymore. Stop I, thinking wait, about it. I went into impossible numbers with my question. Anyway, I'm worried about you guys. Sorry, right, that's why I have wheels. I have wheels to keep track of numbers. That's <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to think about it and do calculations. It's like the pre-show, but it's, it's the regular show. It's pre-show too. So. As you leave the Belmetall Estates, making your way now out through the gates, a mild distraction that uh, Raz has organized for the group of you. Well, the fire the sky is on fire. <laughs> the sky is on fire. When you get the fan. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, With uh, his uh, vision <laughs> of... <laughs> oh, Did... I'm just having a good time. The, is there a gas leak? Like, did you eat something <laughs> weird for lunch today? <laughs> I just had pizza. Oh, did you get ergot poisoning? How old was no. the pizza? Yesterday. Like, just I'm worried work. about you. <laughs> <laughs> just, As a friend, I'm worried about your health. 
<laughs> Say the word. I'm laughing too much. I'll, <laughs> I'll die eventually. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as you head back out from the estate, you don't have a great distance to cover before you are in the greater Catapesh area. And the sun has set, or is setting. The trade in the streets never really diminishes. And in fact, it would be easy walking throughout the greater areas, the higher traffic, the gates of Catapesh specifically, to forget what time of day it may even be, as the wide variety of lamps and lanterns keep the markets well enough lit that it is near enough to day throughout much of the night. And the group of you, once in the throng of the city, are all but lost to the Scarlet Triad. Not only would it become near impossible to track down any individual person as even someone as striking and seemingly recognizable as the Guildmaster of the Jewelers Guild and here she's on not the right now, she is. Because she's wearing the mantle. And she has the unrememorable mantle, right? She shouldn't even look like she just looks like a lady. A person, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the group of you, you know, being a rat and a lizard and some other stuff. Again, nothing really stands out in Catapesh. Everything. It's too bad their diviner fell asleep on the job. Who was mm-hmm. also very shame. unconscious for the next at least a while. So a while. roll me a medicine check. Because everyone might think she's just dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be a variety of possible medicine <laughs> checks. I'm sure somebody will figure out that she is unconscious. The point is, for the moment, nobody is going to be able to come directly um, after you. Where would you like us to take you? I, I'm afraid I don't know where you live. Mm. We can march right to the Jewelers Guild if you prefer. I... Well, that would be the most obvious. You I wouldn't could... want to bait any more of the Triad's wrath towards my guild, and honestly, I don't exactly know how they'll react once they realize that they're going to have a bit of a flaw with their auctions proceedings tonight. Oh, it'd be very awkward. Mm. Do you I want mean, to come we... back to our place for a little bit? Do we have enough room for all of them? Oh, of course. other places that... I and my compatriots here can go. I'm not helpless. I'm not without resources here in the city and those who are willing to shuttle me for the time. But for the moment, perhaps, following you if you have some place safe would be wisest. And I can depart from there given some time, just on the off chance that there's any way they have to follow our trail. I wouldn't want to lead them directly to anything that could they could possibly use against us. Well, then perhaps, them. perhaps our, our safe house might not be the best choice, then in that case, if we're going to be leading them directly to it. Given the grandiose nature of this rescue here, I assume that you would have a plethora of them to choose from. Oh, oh is that what you'd assume? Excellent. Perhaps the child would think that too. Uh, All right, <laughs> along we go. Raz, do we have, we still have your house? I, we didn't actually live in the city. I just know some people that I haven't made contact with yet. Hmm. Well, surely the group of you didn't simply arrive within the walls of Catapesh and dive into the Belmetal estate, or... About a week ago? I mean, it's, it's been about uh, five, maybe, days. That's pretty much how we the story work quickly. goes. It's sort of like a storehouse or something that Who we can, like... Who sent you, then? You know. You must have come directly for me if that was your first on arrival. Uh, no, it actually is more uh, spiting the Scarlet Triad. We're really just here to hurt the Scarlet Triad as hard as we can, and step one was getting you free and making sure that you were safe. Honestly, the organization is an entire blight, not just upon Katapesh, but upon the entire world. We seem to dismantle it, take it apart, brick by brick. We've been doing a good job so far. Well, this might come as a surprise to the group of you, but after the last couple of days' events, I'm very much inclined to agree. Oh, good. So nice to find a common soul. You'd be surprised. Hey, all people just seem to have to do is just to know the Scarlet Triad for a small period of time, and they all come around to that method of thinking. Well, you see, that seems to be quite the difficulty, I find. It's not an ignorance of the Scarlet Triad that gives them so much power here or finds them in the company of so many powerful friends, but quite the opposite. There are many like-minded folk in the streets of Catapesh and in the offices of their guilds and perhaps even on the seats of the Pact Masters. Who knows? We will be taking care of these problems one at a time. For now, this was a very pressing matter. We only had a couple of days really to uh, prepare, so we got you out with the best that we could uh, do. But we only have uh, the lady, I cannot remember. 
It's fine. We can go ahead and, and uh, knock in on that place, I suppose. Yeah. I well, think I suppose would... my very freedom being reduced to a pawn in a game against the Scarlet Triad is a bit of humbling knowledge to take on, but regardless of your methods, I'm, of course, thankful for your Oh, rescue. don't think of it that way. Just think of it as, uh, well, well, how should we put it? Uh, happy coincidence. Also, I really didn't want to see you get eaten by a demon. That's just not cool. I was under the impression I was being sold into slavery, but I wouldn't put it past the Scarlet Triad to remove me from the picture permanently and install someone else in my stead. You didn't see what was in the lobby. Oh, certainly. Oh. All manner well, of terrible things. we walked out of it, and there were a great many things I tried very hard not to commit to memory. That's, That's probably for the best. best. Mm-hmm. And also, you run the Jewelers Guild. I mean... That's not a bad friend to have if you're a girl in the big city. Look, I owe you not only my freedom, but very possibly my life, and that of many of my finest associates as well. These aren't just fellow members of the guild. Many of these are friends. The guild's almost like a family. We, Many of these are family careers for uh, for their, their own lines. They, their fathers and their fathers have worked in the Jewelers Guild for generations past. I've known these folk for longer than some of them have, well, almost as long as many of them have been alive. But I will, in the coming days, hopefully have more tangible ways to express that gratitude. Anyway, where are we um, headed? Uh, this way. Taken that way. You know what? Please don't understand. I don't, don't, don't mistake our, our, our flippant attitude uh, for lack of caring. Um, the Triad have hurt a great number of people, and you're on the, at the bottom of a long list, and we're seeking to make it right. So, also, I didn't expect I to like you. To have you. Well, obviously, I'll, I'll assist you in whatever way I can with uh, any knowledge, information, any assets the Jewel Makers Guild can provide, but I won't pretend to understand the scope of this war you seem to be waging against them, and I'm afraid this precious little that, well, pretty rocks will help you with at the end of the day. But perhaps you can give us some information about the current presiding political feelings going on between certain members of the guild that we could exploit. I can certainly tell you what I can. Certainly. Uh, and be, I think uh, that's probably wise to wait until we arrive at a of destination. Course. Of course. Oh. Although, many believe the streets and the markets of Katapesh to be the safest place information can live. There is simply so much going on, it's almost impossible to overhear any particular conversation. Much less commit to memory without being frighteningly obvious. Hmm. It's um, much easier to spy on a private domicile. Are any of you hurt? Um, she'll kind of look around them. And uh, she sort of shrugs and, and looks back to many of her allies who will just kind of shake their heads or shrug as well. Oh, perhaps only our pride. Okay. They were well enough to take care of us. They, of course, needed us presentable for a fine auction. Mm. It would not do for the uh, audience to have the damaged goods. Regardless of their eventual intentions for us, the Triad, obviously, with their presentation of the Belmetal estate, uh, estate, seem to take themselves very seriously. And presentation and face is near everything here in Katapesh. They wouldn't want anyone to believe that their goods were ill-handled. Trishik, the way you distracted the guard, the, the diviner, was priceless. I really wish I could record it somewhere, like, in memory and replay it. Because it was amazing. Well, to be honest, it was... Uh... Whatever you did in the back is what let me know who it was. Because we assumed it was this uh, random lady. But uh, no, it's just one of the people who summoned the demon. Well, going to the ladies' room is a, is a very... It's, it's something that a lot of people take interest in. They took a very big interest. Almost as if you went casting magic. Now, why would I do that in a place where they were sure to recognize that I was going to cast magic? That was exactly what I was thinking. It's almost like we have a mental connection. I know. I'm just going right? to pull the little jewel out of my pocket <laughs> and contemplate throwing it on a roof somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which one of you has the actual Me. eye of the wise? You have the actual eye of the wise and you just I have just like, carry a, like an it's amethyst literally just like a little crap gem. Yeah, it's probably like the, some random right crystal or mm-hmm. the gold piece. Uh, after another minute or so of walk, you arrive back at Zater's estate and... The group of you making your way inside at this point would be right about as the sun is setting uh, over the far side of the city, away from the oceans. A g- setting into the grand desert that is the entire nation of Katapesh. And you have a much larger group than usual here, of course, as you have a half dozen of uh, nearly various members of the Jewelers Guild, uh, along with the Guildmaster herself. And while 
The Medusa's estate is not small. It is not really massive, except for the entertainment of very large groups. So, it would be a little... I mean, it's far from crammed, but uh, packed for seating, mm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, you being all but forced to spread throughout the, uh, the living room and then the dining area beyond just to find enough places for everyone to rest. Uh, much of the jewelers, guild members, other than the guild master herself, would immediately take the first available seating they came to in the entryway uh, before Malkir would follow the group of you slightly further into the dining area with no immediate sign of Zeta herself anywhere nearby. I'm looking around. The Undyne kind of staying in a situation here. I will admit I wasn't sure what exactly to expect but this isn't the kind of secret spy operation hideout I thought we'd find my, uh, we'd, I'd find myself in. Oh, it's actually the sign of an excellent one. I suppose it is. Far from my area of expertise, you understand. Do you want some ice cream? Do we have any left? Yeah, we have like four or five different flavors that we haven't even tried yet. Ah, uh, maybe not. <laughs> I forget for a moment that the group Queen's of you don't hail like from here and wasn't confident if this was a some kind of a joke as to my heritage, but... No, 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 no. Pardon? This is our first time having ice cream. It's not a thing... Where are you from? Not from anywhere within the inner seas? Is that not a thing that spans farther than the walls of Catafesh? Well, it's quite far. We come from quite far in the north, uh, you understand. And it's... Taldor? Uh... Taldor. I know of Taldor. It's yeah, generally across the sea of the northwest, more or less. Mm, sure, height of civilization, all that. Yeah, we're not from there, but 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 rough, in that rough area. You would it, right? I was getting... kind of be like the opposite direction. Like, Taldor is far east. Roshin doesn't really know geography. Easter is far west. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's you would probably <laughs> chat about as well as Mike. Mike, though, she's in the same general boat here. Like, yeah, far enough. Uh, good More enough. maps. <laughs> well, <clears throat> tell me how it is I can help you. Adam, again than inclined to do what I can. Well, maybe you should get some sleep first. You're probably exhausted, and maybe we can talk in the morning? We Believe are it or not, I've had nothing better to do than sit, sleep, and stare at a wall oh. for about a week. So. Gotcha. Well, I, I do have an uh, interesting question, and it just occurred to me that I'm carrying around a little semi-precious rock of some sort, um, showing her the rock. Is this the Eye of the Wise clone? Or? Uh, yeah, the clone, the, the normal rock. It clones into... Almost a That's separate That's a copy, copy of what I have. Oh, right. The Eye of the Wise turns into the Temple Rock. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I, have, I have a gem of some kind. Okay. Uh, what do you have? A little amethyst. Okay, a little, a little amethyst. pretty purple rock. Are you sure it's not a Malachite? No, it's an amethyst. It should be a Malachite, but we'll go it with it. <laughs> Opportunity whiff. We're already there. Amethyst. But um, I'll show it to her. It, Resme, do you think if we made this into a ring, it would uh, still function? It's a little uh, easier than just carrying a little pebble. I mean, as long as there's nothing magical about the ring and you don't harm the stone at all and it's just a setting for it to sit in, I don't see why it should affect it. Well, the group is just a mercenary company. Then I haven't known hardly anyone else to walk around carrying just loose gemstones in their pockets. Oh, that's... The this <laughs> is a little different. The technical I, term is heroes. It's actually we have a contract and we everything. We did. We're the mercenary heroes of Breach Hell. Then. Fair <laughs> enough. I'll uh, put the gem in her hand. And uh, me. she'll take it. And oh, then hi. And inside her head. I immediately feel, ah, this is some kind of strange magic focus. Uh -huh. Indeed. As long as I have it on my person, I would be able to communicate telepathically. But if I could have it made into a ring, it's a little less suspicious than a little rock in your pocket. And certainly something be easily enough done. It wouldn't take the work of a single day really to complete. Oh, that's a good idea, Trishik. Absolutely. Uh, this, again, is the least I can do. Um. How about this? I, the tale of exactly what you're after, what you've been through, how you've arrived here. Um, and she just takes the, uh, uh closes her hand around the, the amethyst and then kind of stops for a second. Like in the rags they've outfitted me, I don't really have any proper pockets with which to carry this. Uh, I'll hand this back to you for now, but if you bring it to the Jewelers Guild house here in the coming days and mention me at all, I'll be certain to have something worked out for you. Thanks. Anyway, your tale, I'm sure, is a long one, and if I'm to guess at all, one I won't understand half of. Perhaps it's easier to maybe give you what information that I have. You're after the Scarlet Triad for some 
external reason, I take it. It's driven you to Katapesh itself. So you, uh, you, you said they're a blight upon the world, I take it. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Their organization's field? Everywhere nice. from the Mwangi expanse, Iskur, and the. Uh, Kintargo. They were Kintargo. In Kintargo. Yep, yep. Yes. had an operation there. They're uh, literally, literally everywhere. Well, there are less places now. It is also true. We have made sure to take care of them when we found them. We just left the Dwarven City. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I yes. Yep. forgot yep. about yep. the It's so easy to forget about Cobbler. I think we're just, just wishful thinking. It's been on quite an impressive journey, it seems. Yeah. Scarlet Triad certainly operates a field far more than I understand. I know they believe themselves to rival much of the Aspis Consortium in their reach, but I thought that was bluster at best. Well, I've... perhaps... What I have to tell you may just be repetition of old news, but I can tell you what I know, and then you can, what I've seen rather, and you can find out if there's anything beyond that. Uh, I know, if nothing else, that Etrix, uh, Etrix Tregal, he's the head of the Scarlet Triad, he runs the whole organization. We're familiar with the name. He came to me personally for a project of his. Uh, he, well, I can't give you a ton of details on exactly what it was he wanted because he refused to indulge. He only wanted several of the masters of my guild, several of our highest and most skilled artisans to work on some undisclosed off-site project. And you know, I wasn't exactly going to go ahead and just sign many of my finest men and women off to an unknown contract of no real specifications, so I declined. I'm not going to take ambiguous work orders. He didn't take that particularly well, but I figured the matter was well enough closed at that point. It wasn't too long ago that uh, some guild business called me out to Solku. Uh, a couple days journey to the south of here. On the way back, I was ambushed by an entire gang of Scarlet Triad agents. I and, of course, and she uh, gestures back to the seating area. I and the men and women I had with me at the time. They smuggled us back into the city and took me into the Red Pyramid. I know that much. But they blinded us afterwards. Bagged our heads, gagged us, stopped us from communicating or seeing where it was we were going. But we definitely went a fair way underground, I'm certain. You can feel it in the air. I'm a bit more sensitive to that than most normal humans, given, well, she just kind of gestures at the fin-like mm. appendages on the side of her face. I took the hood off. It was in a windowless, high ceilinged workshop built around some kind of a magical forge in the center. Magical or supernatural, I'll admit I can't really tell the difference, but it was far from mundane to be certain. Along with my captured colleagues, we learned that the group of us were now slaves. Slaves! To the Scarlet Triad and to Etrix personally, and we were to toil at rebuilding something out of shards of golden crystal. Etrix and one of his mages, whose name just escapes me. In fact, I'm not even sure he ever really gave it to me. They test us with reassembling something and fashioning replacements for any pieces that might have been missing. I don't know what exactly it was, but given the myriad generally curved pieces where it was unbroken, it seemed like it was a sphere of some kind, about the size of a human head, perhaps. It was frustratingly difficult work. I. What material were you making it out of? It was strange, almost gilded crystal. It wasn't metal, I know that much, but it was ferropaque. Very smooth, almost continually cold to the touch, no matter the circumstance. And the pieces, no matter how well, physically, we should have engineered various sections to be recombined, the work was almost impossible. Was it, it was fated to remain shattered. Did they allow you to look at it through a jeweler's well, piece? Well, of course. We, the work was meticulous. This, it broke it, almost like glass. How it did seems. it look when you looked under it? Did it look like a crystal would normally look or more like a diamond or a jewel? Again, I would keep it close akin perhaps to glass. Uh, the way the thing had broken, I think shattered is perhaps the accurate word. It, it wasn't destroyed like a rock or a gemstone. It looked like it had burst. 
uh, like some kind of force had been applied to it from inside, perhaps. Hmm. Um, the thing had come apart almost in planes, but the, the fragments and shards that were left together, those that were of any real size, were almost full wedges of this original crystal, as if the outside of the core stayed intact more than the various pieces had remained convened to each other. It was a strange breakage, to be certain, and not one that I recognize, and again, one that I'm all but certain is magical or supernatural in nature. Uh, to that end, they brought in magi, spellcasters of all kinds, to examine our work daily. Uh, they had as much of a hand in the reconstitution of this thing as I and my fellow artisans. Um, many of our instructions, in fact, had to come down from them. There were very specific and meticulous ways the material had to be handled and procedures they were putting it through to in ensure something. I don't know, this is... <laughs> I'm not a sorcerer of any no, kind. I don't of understand not. the depths of this. Did they use any particular terminology or words, even if you don't understand what they were? Not that I'd be able to recant. Well, did you actually manage to fix the thing? We... We did. Fixed is perhaps a strong word, as almost a full third of it is just replacement. Uh, golden crystal, uh, glass-like crystal we'd fashioned with our alchemists had brought down to, to our specifications to various molds and work that we'd done. But the end result was indeed a golden sphere. Didn't... Didn't... Uh, didn't what's-his-face say something about an orb, Roisin? I'm not sure what when, you're talking about. When he was going on. When he was going on and on. Well, who and, was going on and on? Uh... The guy, the guy who who died. You're really not helping me right now. Sorry. There have been a lot of those. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, but at, it was... At this point, as you're thinking here, uh, from back around uh, around the corner from the sitting area where uh, the stairs would be, you immediately first see a kind of startled reaction from many of the jewelers sitting in the living room. Many of them kind of, their conversation stops immediately. Several of them sit back in their chairs, several of them look a little uh, white in the face. And you see uh, Zader come around the corner, he's sort of looking down at all of them, but then turns their head to the group of you. Mission accomplished. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Hi, Zader. Zader. This is many more folk than I expected to be arriving in this home, uh, but... Many more folk than we expected to find. We would... Uh, all of, what, one, maybe two? And you have provided them no drinks or refreshments? You simply sat them there? We, we the offered them ice cream. That well, the is... downside of uh, you being such a gracious host Would is that you... we actually don't know where any of it's kept. And she's like, shaking her head. Continues past the group of you. Uh, again, snakes fully unfurled. Clear Medusa. She's in her own home. She's not I ain't putting pants on here. in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put pants on in my own home. <laughs> and, uh, over towards the kitchen to start preparing at least a tray of some kind of drinks for everybody. And it's sort of shaking her head. He's like, I expect this perhaps from the less cultured of your group, but the Yasoki and Resme, I had perhaps thought better of the pair of I you. I wanted to give them ice cream, a nap, a room to sleep in, and a change of clothes. They wanted to but sit here and tell us their story. And Zader just kind of Wait, sorry. As she's going about <laughs> her business here. Sorry, what, what are we talking about? Have I just been slideways and salted? <sighs> Partially, yes. Yes. Huh. You get used to it after she's, a while. She's probably oh, Sheenie, right. honey, if you if you thought that you had any grasp of manners, then you were seriously misapprehended. The girls' school did a long way toward teaching you some things, but we have a long way to go. But uh, Milk continues after this little interruption and in the, the counters. Just kind of shrugs. Well, the group of you seem to have access to more resources than I'd imagined, and you are certainly a strange band of mercenaries to be hailing We're from us at Catapest. We're not mercenaries. You're we are not doing it for money. Heroes. Look, I mean, they... they did slay a dragon. They are heroes. That gives you the title of hero. And Zader just, uh, just kind of calls over, you could go with adventurers. Adventurers, fit. This has not been an adventure. This has been a nightmare. I don't know. I've had Ad a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, same. You guys are... So weird. I mean, most of the people you're talking to Marshall and Trushi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're a little weird. Yeah, well, yeah. Just a for little them, bit. it may have been fun. For me, 
I originally left my hometown with a group of friends and comrades and people who I'd known for years. And now and it just has us. I came back with almost none of them. So well, not you know, really. The kind of things you get into, I'm not entirely surprised. Well, it Is... didn't start out like that. It started out as something really, really small. And then it got really big, really fast. Well, again, whatever incredible web of causes has led you to my rescue this eve, I'm thankful for it. But back to the beyond what I've told crystal. you there, I'm not really sure there's much I can provide you about what exactly it is they've wanted our hand in. But the fact that Etrix was overseeing it personally tells me that it's at least of some level of importance to the Scarlet Triad. They have a big operation, obviously, as you've seen, and there's we know exactly. only so much that the Guildmaster himself can have his hand in. I take it once you finished your task, they went and decided to sell you off to the highest bidder. Of course. They didn't need us anymore at that point, and it wasn't too long after that that we were taken to the Belmatal estate, uh, I suppose. I didn't know where we had been teleported to, but didn't really get to see it until our escape. So I... I don't know what all I can tell you about anything they're doing operationally, but I imagine you have a great, uh, greater knowledge of that than I do. Uh, if you've got questions about their work within Catapash, and well, again, the political situation, as you put it, I can help you with that. That'd be spectacular. Actually, no, we're, we're heading over to the Gladiators Guild just tomorrow. Uh, oh, do you know, yeah. any, anything you can tell us about that? That new guild master. She seems like quite a piece of work. Nears uh, to be able to figure it out. Sandy Claus. Sand Claus, right. That's her name. Uh, here, it's a bit of a triad plant, if anything, is the word. Oh, that's so... Oh, it'd be terrible if something were to happen to her. At this point, I imagine it's only <laughs> legally a distinct guild by by manner of the raw gold it pulls in. But that is what call that is what runs all things here in Catafesh. Sizable purse, do sizable weight. In fact, masters, of course, are up to their own things, but don't have much of a ruling hand in the city proper. They kind of just ensure things flow smoothly between the guilds. It's up to us to really manage things with our monthly meetings, and beyond that, there isn't any much we do beyond our own business and our own operations. I'm not letting you take any more notes during our weekly meetings, Roisin. Your handwriting is horrible! Oh, and if you're just gonna go hand it back to me and make me lose my place without actually handing it back to me at the page it was open for, you don't get to look at him either. <laughs> Why did I let you be the scribe? Um, I actually do have a question for you, if you don't mind me asking. Well, that's as I can. Uh, do you, do you know exactly what happened to, uh, uh, I think his name was Old One-Eye, the old guildmaster of the Gladiators Guild? It was, it was Toddy One-Eye, right? That's what I knew him as. Uh, this may come as a surprise to you, but those that frequent the Gladiators Guild and those in its upper echelons don't have much overlap with my business. They're typically want to spend their coins on sharper blades of hardier armor and not so much fancy rings and shiny baubles. I, mean, I don't know I much of that, the workings but... of the Gladiators Guild at all, unfortunately. I only know what I've heard from you know, my position as Guildmaster here in Catafesh. Well, I... I figured, you know, you Guildmasters <laughs> talk to each other. And, uh... Do we? Well, I suppose we're obligated at our monthly meetings. We interact as necessary, but if we have no business with each other, if there's no way that we can help each other's guilds, it's a little for us to discuss. Look. I don't mean to put myself on a pedestal here. I'm no different. If it's not going to put coin in the pockets of my artisans and promote our own businesses, I have no reason to deal with them. They have no use to me. There's no service. But you Something. seem to care very deeply about the people you work with. It's not what I expected of somebody in charge of a guild in a large city. It was unexpected. Something some would see as a flaw, perhaps, but truly one that's only really extended to what is admittedly a precious few of my number. The Jewelers Guild is among one of the smaller in the city, perhaps, uh, for that I sit on the council only by the size of our individual transactions. Ah. As I'm sure we do much less business within the streets than well, the Aspis Consortium to be certain, and the Scarlet Triad almost as certain as well. But those dealings we make, those large pur purchases we broker, they often are to nobility hailing from distant seas like Taldor. Large amounts of coin in single transactions, eclipsed perhaps only by the Gladiators Guild on their bigger performance evenings. Hmm. Well... But... Do you know... We were told that there are some guilds who kowtow to the Triad because they're afraid of them, and some who actually have 
an interest in what they're doing. Well, resume. Have a hero point, perhaps from Jaded Tempest. Um, thanks. I miss the monocle, the halfling who can't <laughs> taste peppers, the pale grumpy elf, and the cowboy hat wearing champion. <laughs> We started in such simpler times. <laughs> <laughs> now we're the weird traveling zoo. <laughs> Wait, they were simple? They were much they simpler. They were way <laughs> simpler. Way simpler. In fact, we walked into a castle and got... Jumped by rats. Thoroughly humbled by some rats. I thought it was centipede. I swear, that was the closest buddy ever came to dying in the whole campaign was that first room right there. Or the TPK. Yeah, like yeah that one. No, yeah. probably because you can't die. Yeah, but you that know. was different. That was like Buddy was never. But Buddy is fine. There are definitely several. Um, well, here's the thing. You describe this as a political situation, which is the term I use for convenience, but it's not wholly wrong, I suppose. But it is almost fully business. Hmm. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Scarlet Triad. Uh, I suppose, by many rights, you would consider them a partner for quite some time. Purely by nature of the fact that we share a lot of transactions, we win a lot of commissions for them, and we broker a lot of their goods. For them to have spit in the face of that so thoroughly and so directly and violently truly speaks to the desire and perhaps the need that Etric saw in the completion of this weird orb of theirs. It's... They do believe that that orb, or perhaps whatever they are doing, will save the world. And he did say as much, believe it or not. We... Insisting that the world itself would burn were we to be unsuccessful in repairing this thing. He was Ooh. quite direct about that. We're I familiar with the story. It's why I thought perhaps better to share what I knew rather than pry further. I don't know what madness drives him now, but it's one that I'm... It's unfamiliar to me. Admittedly, I've had little direct dealing with their guild, and almost none with Etrix himself outside the meetings. This is something typically handled by many of the members of the guild, many of our brokers and our dealers who organize these uh, business deals, these exchanges. But you're not wrong. There are several guilds who have little business overlap with Triad and their dealings, who mostly work within Katapesh itself, and... To the promotion of the city and their coin comes from more Ooh. mundane runnings of things who bow perhaps to the triad out of a sense of fear of force mm. the first one of course that comes to mind is the farmers union yes i know that the triad provides a lot of protection for many of their trade routes many of the places that they travel and they bring their goods in from outlying farms and ports as well those that don't arrive directly in katapesh proper I have heard some musings of some discontent, but you don't have to go far uh, far to find that. Many of them will want to shout it from the streets these days. Hmm. Beyond that, I know that many of these simpler guilds in the walls, the sweepers and the dunk carters are the foremost that come to mind, uh, but the upright barristers as well have no particular love for the triad, but would put some caution into a attempting to avoid their offense, simply not wanting to cross against them, which is strange for the upright barristers who seem to revel in creating unnecessary drama and subterfuge between the guilds. Seems as much a spy agency as anything else. Yeah, there's drama, and then there's the lion that catches the mouse under its paw. Again, though, my purview doesn't extend terribly far beyond that which is of interest to my guild, so... That makes sense. Much of what I can share of the position of any others is not much more than rumor. Just kind of shrugs. Um, from the description she gave of the type of glass or crystal or anything like that, can I get a sense of what the material might be? Um, or was it just not detailed enough of information? Not, that's not really helpful. I mean, that it's could not, be such a great... Variety it was the, things, the it really. was the temperature more than anything. Guess? You can just no, you can't no. because no, because all the gold they were taking from the Mwangi expanse is the with draconic. Oh. Yeah, you can whatever. probably make a fair guess then. Uh, but that's that's for the uh, the thing itself. 
I have so many hero points yeah. that just got machine gun to the chat. Oh, boy. Justinian Nine's got a big old stack. Wow. One for Marshall, one for Trishik, one for Raz. Oh, I think Trishik just got another one, This man has got a glorious yeah. pile here, probably saved up from the uh, the Gen Con weekend. And then Trippy, darling, what do you call a mountaintop? I've done it. Guarded <laughs> by rogues. A sneak peek. A sneak peek. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A good thing that was actually good. That was actually pretty good. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm mad is because I mad. really I can't, can't be mad. Can't. It's actually That's amazing. Like, yeah. You know what this means. That's right? a high quality pun. I can't begrudge it. I have a lead on you now. I mean, probably. I haven't spent one in like the entirety of book five. Yeah, but it's finally true shake alone. But has it's, gotten past your total. It's happening. His it's main happened. supplier of hero points is built up though. They're ready. They're no, waiting. No, they're just waiting. They're literally the second I spend one. Yeah. I'm going to get it restored instantly. Link's going to come in and just dump, dump, dump. <laughs> Bam. Take it back. Bam. Take it back. Yep. So um, she would be able to describe, as far as the material, there's not much more she could tell you about the shards and the fragments itself that, she ha that they provided her. Uh, but she could tell you that much of what they were using, they were trying to forge um, a sort of alchemical crystal to fill in the larger sections. Uh, but smaller areas between these broken fragments, uh, filling in the gaps, I mean, again, it's almost like shattered glass, so it's impossible to replace all of it between the bigger pieces. Uh, they were running it with uh, what seemed to her to just be gold. Um, and they were using the furnace to melt down and uh, run this gold itself to make it all one whole piece again. And that's probably and they had they a very precise supply of it uh, and a pretty impressive amount. That well, they we, provided. we we know where that came from, so that makes sense. Um. Okay. And she would explain further that the forge that they had her working with, the one in the center of the room. Hmm. When I say magical or or supernatural, it's uh, I mean it in the plainest possible sense. It's not just that the thing itself was, wasn't was powered by coal or any mundane source. I, I'm not sure where it drew its power from. But it's that the the, the, for, the forge itself, this is, this is gonna sound insane, but the forge itself, the actual machine, it felt. Can you share an image with me? I don't think it'll help really. The thing was hateful. What, like rat? I've never, I've heard tales, of course, of hauntings and ghosts and specters or whatever. I mean, it's whether or not it's true, they're tales that exist. But I'd never been really want to believe them until I was forced to work with this this thing. It's as if it wasn't even a forge, really. That was just a byproduct. It's something was trapped inside it that was furious. That's imprisonment. I, I don't know. It was. It was unsettling just to be in near it. Don't suppose it had this particular sigil on it, and I'll sketch out uh, a Druskar symbol. No, I. That's not something I've seen before. I don't believe. Good to hear. And she'll crumple it. Um. Let's see what she can. Don't. Possibly define. Don't suppose it had this symbol on it. What is this? Um, I'm pretty sure the Echo Jai showed me the Hawk symbol. I mean, if you just want the symbol of the Hawk, I, yeah. Roshin probably knows it. Yeah. Can you draw um, it? Can you sketch that one out as well? No. It, it didn't bear any kind of iconography or symbology that I could recognize, not that I noticed anyway. It was a strange and complex contraption, but it wasn't a particularly large one. Hmm. Uh, this wasn't some, like... Uh, the room they kept us in was decently sized, maybe around 25 feet across. I mean, the, the space from this back door here to the entryway of this very building. The forge itself wasn't particularly large, just strange. Hmm. Well, regardless. Maybe it wasn't a forge. 
Well, you could trying to put together a puzzle with one piece. So yeah. it could have just been another golem for all we know. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Are you kidding me? Like, those oh, things are you uncommon. Have any idea how uncommon those things are. Yes, because the Scarlet Thread appears to have bought them all. Oh, you know, it's a good point. It's a good point. All of we, them. The f- throughout the entire planet. All of them. We have a, another another problem. Um, Miraville has been completely taken in by the Scarlet Triad. She was at the gala, and she's completely on Treagle's side. Well, it's really simple. We just kidnap her and unbrainwash her. What? Isn't that just re-brainwashing? That's just doing exactly what they did to her, if well, they did that in well, the first place. Well, yeah, but that's what you she want. She says, she she told me, she mentioned names, and I can't remember them as a player because I'm bad at names, and I didn't write any of them down. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a emotional moment. It was a very emotional moment. Pretty sure um, Nick did. No, because no. I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> but it, the only person who was there for that was Raz. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And Shashik was off to the side distracting her guard. Um, I was doing my job. But she mentioned names and that they're doing something big and that it's all going to be worth it in the end because they're the heroes and that you guys are just a bunch of murderers. Oh, she's not accused you of being a murderer. Oh, she accused me of being a murderer, too, but I technically didn't kill anyone. Well, then, thank you. We're a group of murderers. Let's let's go ahead and be in the right pack here. (laughs) Inclusive language. That's it. That's it. Now then, um, it it just, it's, as as much as this is not not, not the the best of circumstances, it's only to be expected. Goodness, it's it's actually rather good that they've been taking good care of her. Um, If she's reasonably well taken care of and actually working for him, she might have a a fair degree of freedom. If we can actually change her mind along with the rest of the city, then we have a valuable ally. Do you have a way of contacting her uh, that uh, wouldn't alert her triad masters? Oh, we can try using that one spell that puts us all in a council of dreams. Oh, perfect. Oh, that could work. Oh, that's a great idea. But, uh, you don't have to go and be convincing her or anything. Simply let, us know, let her know what's going on. Let her know what we did uh, once it becomes public, of course. Probably leave out the body count, though. Our body I'm count of zero? Sh- that is a spectacular body count. What are you talking about? No, I mean, like, the total body Oh, we're count. not talking about that. Oh, yes, no, 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 no. It, don't, don't show her the bag full of uh, mandibles. <laughs> I do not think she'll appreciate that. Yeah, so, so proud of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Heroes. Uh, here's my bag of trophies. Heroes. It's all manacles. Yeah, but I mean, look at all the symbols. Each one is a dead slaver. <laughs> it's so a good thing I changed the symbol on my armor. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be a dead giveaway. I really, really, really wish I knew why the heck these people truly, truly, truly believe they're doing the right thing. And so many of them seem like really reasonable human beings they, who have a lot of logic on their side. Well, that doesn't seem the slightest bit reasonable. Uh, did I not finish that thought, perhaps? This orb we were creating, this uh, he said it was his little contingency, he called it. And along with that promise that the world would burn if we failed, he often ended otherwise it would only burn at his command. Something is deeply wrong about him, but admittedly it's no less bravado than he usually shows, I suppose. Which reminds me, I cast Nightmare on him. <laughs> <laughs> Screw oh, that yeah, guy. yeah, you mentioned his name. Nightmare. Uh, but Rev, <laughs> ever since you ran into Miravel at the party there. Obviously, that's kind of been a thing that is hard to take your focus off of. But sharing at the party some and kind of uh, engaging yourself here a little further. But this bit that uh, Malk says, make me a, I believe you uh, recently got a feat that gives you dragon lore. Yes. That is better than bardic lore. Yes. Make me a dragon lore check. Ooh. For a total of a... 46. Whoa, that's a big number. That is exactly a critical success. Hmm, very which nice. very matters on this one. So you kind of think, trying to tear your focus away from Miravel, you think about what Malkai's Killer here has told you. And you think about this thing they were playing together about these fragments, about the fact they were running it with almost certainly this moggy gold. But this is the thing they were harvesting it from. And you you have only been told about this gold. You weren't there. But surely at this point, you are well accounted with uh, Resme's previous adventures. Every night. Um, so... The arsenic-laced you would cancer know gold. There was like, the arsenic-laced <laughs> gold that they were 
taking because of its like strange affluence, its strange, almost draconic essence, energy. You, and I love this because no one is going to believe this is just the one thing you picked <laughs> to research to do your bardic lore stories about. You have told some stories about the uh, dragon storms of Taldor and some uh, other related things. The dragon plague? And the dragon plague. And you know what this kind of sounds like to you? No. Yeah. Is it really? Yelp. Sounds like a dragon orb to me. It sounds like an orb of dragon kind. Not obviously the orb of dragon kind of its type. You, this is an area of much of you've focused your research just to, uh, and your studies because the stories and the legends are just interesting. It's a thing you actually are well acquainted with, Raz, <laughs> and also call me the person. Yay. These artifacts are ancient, incredibly powerful spheres that allow you to directly control dragons of the matching lineage. Um, what was once the orb of gold dragon kind allowed its wielder complete control over gold dragons. You, with the critical success, would know particularly of the gold dragon orb specifically because it is one of the few that has a, a known history. Many of them are kind of mysterious question marks as to where they are, if they even still exist, or what happened with them. But what happened with the Orb of Gold Dragon Kind was, was somewhat public. It was shattered centuries back. In, a, in an agreement, in a truce, this was actually done in Taldor, I believe, after the Age of the Dragon Storms, uh, as a part of a way that the, the Emperor at the time was attempting to broker peace with the dragons. Uh, and what led, led to today, uh, Taldor probably has the greatest number of gold dragons in a divinity nation in the inner seas because they are just openly welcomed and they a lot of times actually run banks or major institutions within Taldor. This was a ceremonial gesture of like the end of an era. We're not at war with the dragons anymore. You know the specifics of what happens, but you know that orb was destroyed into a bunch of fragments that sure sound like what the Guildmaster is describing. But she claimed the Scarlet Triad had about two-thirds of the orb by her estimation. And you know that over time, most of the shards have been collected in Hermea by a gold dragon named Minkare. The liege of Hermea. Minkare, that was that was the other name. And you know that he is said to have given away many of them as diplomatic gifts to various heads of state, kings and empresses and that kind of thing. It is interesting, but not impossible, that the Scarlet Triad has accrued two thirds of the Orb of Gold Dragon kind. Well, that's not good. So, about the Dragon Plague. Are you well, kidding me right again. now? Um, from, from, well. I can't believe this is the thing you And it was 100% you, this, just me. We did not set this up. This is, this was not plot Dude, related. Not at all. It was. He, Wanted to look up something just as a player to like read as his litanies for his bardic performance. He just picked like the dragon play in the history of Taldor and all that. Just completely on his own. No idea it was gonna show up in the plot. <laughs> we have a worshiper of Alceta and a dragon plague specific mm. researching. Worshiper of Alceta mm. also completely random. No <laughs> like, planning. Um, just happened. From from the sounds of it, he's trying to rebuild a, a dragon orb a golden dragon kind of what, what now like you golden mean that, dragons you mean like that story you're always telling yeah the us? dragon plague where they I tried to control it out. Yeah, well. I actually have listened to it many 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 times that's why I started tuning it out 
very interesting and fascinating story, actually, and shaped the entirety of Haldorian culture. No, 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 no. Come back. Come Marshall back. Was asleep. Come back to the dragon. <laughs> um, and involved a lot of slaying of dragons and a lot of a lot of a lot of death. Um, but from the sounds of it, they're trying to reconstruct the one that was shattered in a truce. Somehow they managed to get what did you say? Two thirds. Two thirds. Uh, it seemed like uh, about from what we had. Uh, the crystal we had to fashion to fill the larger gaps in the thing ended up, I'd, I'd say, being about a third of the total orb. From what I can just guess, it's probably going to use it to try to control the hawk. But it's a golden dragon orb. <laughs> Who knows what they're doing with magic? Well, the Herald of Fire was, was red, though. <laughs> Who knows what they're doing with magic? No, no, you, Jack, you can't just wave your magic. hand and say, well, magic, you know, and then have it explain away something that doesn't make sense. It's like my that. experience. That's what a great mini magic I do that's and, a- is. A statement of fact. If That's just because they're lazy, and you can take that from me. But it's not the whole <laughs> orb. That doesn't make any sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense that it's like, oh, yeah, we have two-thirds of this incredibly powerful magical artifact. We're just going to fill in the rest with this glass stuff that we found, and it's well, totally going to work. No, they alchemically would... crafted it and been researching it and had a lot of magic from what... They were extremely particular about how the thing was reassembled, and it the sorcerers were there every fluff. single day. If you have what appears to be a bomb in your hand, nobody is going to question if it will explode. But, would. wait, oh my god, that's what he meant, that's what he meant about triggering the end of the world himself. It has nothing to do with Dahak, it has to do with what happens if Dahak fails. Well, Help. this is certainly not my area of understanding. No, 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 I'm... I, know, I, know, I know what he means now. If the he Hawk's can't... The evil god. If he oh. can't awaken the hawk, then what he's going to do is use the dragon orb to enslave all of the golden dragons and re and and sick them upon the world. I thought you think he wants to actually burn the entire place down. Wait, if he can't control he, it, I think that's exactly what he wants would to do. Would he not use the golden dragons to fight the hawk? That, that was more of my understanding. Of I plan might have been. It's I don't, a terrible idea. That's but a bad if idea. he is trying to kill the hawk or beat him, it would not be a bad idea to just recruit every golden dragon against their will. But if the hawk is and granted, I'm not so, big on religion. I apologize to interrupt again, but this thing that we put together is a dragon mind control ball. Basically, yes. yes. Yeah. That's a good surmise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, that's what he thinks it is. Only on gold dragons, uh, though, apparently. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Is there a mm-hmm. difference besides just what color the scales happen to be? I do yes. not know. I mean, a lot. I think there are different species. This one appears to be a golden orb. Perhaps I think there this is, is the a part one. where I'm going to take my leave of this conversation. It's been some time. Surely our absence has been recognized by this point, and if the triad haven't come banging down the door, I think it may be safe enough for me to take the rest of my men and try to find somewhere else. Uh, please, avail yourself to the Jewelers Guild sometime in this coming week, and allow me to reward you properly, at least thank you properly for everything you've done for us. Thank of you course. for the Love information. It. Exactly. Your thanks can be helping us pull the triad down and removing their blight from the planet. And the more I hear about it, the more it sounds like, really, I'd like to know as little as possible. I mean, you're not that wrong. Said, if you're seeking to bring down the triad, obviously, I'll help you whatever way I can. You're too kind, Gilmas. I don't really know what all I can do, but oh, it seems I've already set you on some kind of a tangent. Oh, nice. A nice little list of... I wish but- you the best of luck and safety in following it. And good luck to you in finding Sanctuary. And uh, when she turns to the Medusa, who at this point has long since served a, a large tray of uh, a very hard crusted bread that's almost difficult to bite through the outside of, but extremely I had some stale bread left over. Soft to the, <laughs> well, extremely soft in the inside and still almost kind of I, oddly I glistening. I put my bread in the water for you and made it a little softer. Here you go. <laughs> as well as some, uh, just some simple water and uh, a single wine That's bottle. That's the water that I dipped out. it in. <laughs> to everyone. And Mike would, would turn to uh, Zeta as well. And you as well, for being a very gracious host, seemingly. It's an unexpected notice. And the... Medusa would kind of nod. It is the least I can do. Believe me, I have as much as of a vested interest in the Triad's demise now as you, perhaps. You may be the only one in this city who can match it. it it's going up your nose. It's trying to. And uh, <laughs> holds it off the side of her head and nods to Malk. And Malk heads out to the living area, gathers her lads, 
and uh, with some turns, nods, and quick thanks, the Jewelers Guild employees make their way back out to some secondary hopeful safe house. Away from all this weird talk. Away from all this weird talk. They're like, I don't want to sign out to be involved in this. Wait, what does the Hawk have to do with any of this? Oh, yeah, he's going to show up and good? we got to like deal with that. I'm leaving. Because so they're gone. You are very open with those you barely know. Well, it's not exactly like they can do anything about it anyways. I doubt they understood a 10% of what we were saying. Well, I don't even understand. That's an assumption you make. I'm bad at lying. one at that. I could hand one of the uh, the keys to any random person. It does not mean they know how to use it. But it is unwise to let any more information than necessary leave these walls if there is not a powerful reason for it. I mean, I guess you're right. We just got really excited because, as I said, we're not mercenaries. What is this wee nonsense? Look... It's actually not a bad idea. The entirety of it was essentially selling the idea that the triad are up to no good. At the very least, they'll take that away with them. But you have the support of the Guildmaster already. Surely, if you seek to rescind the Pactmaster's support of the triad, she will already vote as such. She'll vote as such, um, but uh, who knows? Perhaps hearing all of this will make the uh, will make her heart be a bit more into it, too. It'd be good if she's motivated out of... Uh, not just spite. It will be good if, upon your arrival at the Jewelers Guild Hall itself, she provides provides you with monetary recompense that can be used for resources. Oh, that would be actually spectacular if she'd do that. Yeah. I would imagine that is the outcome. There are a pair of earrings I had my eye on, too. That's another story. This operation we have is not one that will pass without coin. If we wish to sway the hearts of enough guilds, before their meeting at the end of the month, barely now two and a half weeks away, we may need to throw around, throw around a fair bit of weight. Hmm. It would be best to lay the groundwork before that, perhaps at least introduce ourselves to some of these guilds and then perhaps entreat several of them at once to a gala of some kind. As we mentioned before, being able to sway several at one time while time is of the essence will be valuable. The Jewel Master's support in this would be useful. Okay. I mean, you certainly mo- know more about the prevailing winds in the city than we do. And, and certainly more about hosts and galas. And you seem to know a far bit more about the operations of the Triad than you may have originally let on. I do not know much of dragons and gods and whatever is a Dehawk, but this is interesting knowledge. You are confident in this, Raz? That it is this mind control orb of sorts? Extremely confident, actually. Very, very confident. I had a book somewhere, but I lost it. Back in Breachel? Are you sure you haven't just torn all the pages out of it? And no, not that book. Cover away? Honestly, I... I love how you have your old character sheets in there. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember all of the details, but I do recall my schoolmaster from when I was in primary school talking about some such thing, and it sounds familiar, although I certainly don't have the details the way Raz does. Well, with your... Evacuations surprisingly successful. Where do you have your sights set next? That would be the uh, Gladiator Guild. We have heard the uh, bad things about them. And Marshall and, uh, won't shut up about it. Yeah. And I may or may not have signed us up for the match for tomorrow. What? Wait, what? What? Digs in his beard and pulls out the contract. Uh, we had to get in one way or another. It is, uh... Really, it's less of, uh, as you look at it, a hard contract, a sign-up that he has, but it is more... It's a death waiver. <laughs> but it is more of a waiver of, of any liability to the Gladiators Guild well, to even any... signed our names to all of this. ...accidental <laughs> deaths or dismemberment I mean. that occur in the uh, procedures of their events. Uh, I mean... Old... I mean, look at the prize. I mean, look at like what they offer if we win some matches. Oh, actually, that's a really nice mount. Look at ah, that. See? Oh, they got gambling, don't they? 
You know, we have, we have a bit you, of funds uh, left over. We can actually... Can, we, certainly, you can wager on yourself, can't 1500 you? Yes. Gold, uh, 1,500 gold as a payout purse uh, eh. for signing up for... It's <laughs> just, like, literally a walk-on nobody. I mean, yeah. you're a walk-on nobody. It's not bad. It's They're not just bad. like, hey, you want to come fight in the arena? You want to fight whatever we tell you to fight? You'll get 1,500 gold if you win. Like, Yeah, actually, that's like... Uh, that's like getting... Yeah, that's like we'll, we'll pay you like fifty thousand dollars to go and like risk or just your life. A, a nobody for walking to the arena. That's a pretty like large this is like legit dollars. like the like the plot of like most death arena movies. Actually, <laughs> now that I think fifteen hundred gold. Like again, it's easy to lose that's, perspective because we're sixteenth level yeah. now. That is like you buy a mansion with that. Yeah. That is a huge amount of money. Well, what I was thinking, guys, was first we make a good impression, get a few fights in, get popular, and then in between, you know, being you know. The best of the best. We learn what we can of the old guild master. Learn what's going on with the new guild master. But I trying. Want, I don't want to beat people up. Are we sure oh, you we're just the stay best? In the back like you always do, and let us do the dirty work. We'll keep you safe. I don't want. It's not that I worry about you keeping me safe. I just don't want to beat people up. You Unless they're the triad, in which case I'm happy to beat people up, but Maybe not random people. What the? Wait, well, you if it makes you feel food. better, San the Sandy Claus person who's in charge of the guild now is a very mean person that nobody really likes, apparently. Well, Just because she's unpopular in school doesn't mean we're going to cut her head off. What do you think this well, is? Resume got bullied in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, let's just get one thing straight. Uh, certainly it would be merciful if there are other gladiators coming after us. We'll, we'll, we'll humiliate them a bit, don't and worry. They're, they're we'll keep them from dying. Are, like, there's, there's a packet to this. There is the, the death and dismemberment waiver is the primary thing that Marshall signed that he's excited about. Um, but there is some more behind that that is just general procedure. Uh, you do arrive to be considered before noon uh, to be scheduled into the day's events. You will fight literally whatever they tell you to fight. Uh, but it has some more about the general running of the matches and how things work, some simple outlines and rules. Uh, it is generally not a death match. Um, it is actually fully expected that sentient combatants will allow surrender. Uh, or even in a moment of like total defeat will yield to, at the very least, the whims of the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, it is not run in there and murder them instantly. Um, and the the right to surrender to yield is actually a big part of this. Oh. Uh, it says in okay. all matches, whether or not it is like uh, organized teams fighting each other or whether you are so fighting good. some kind of, uh, as it yeah. says, beast or demon. Um, <laughs> there, there are some good sports. The bone bubble comes back. Catfish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, more montage. demons than all to do with. I tell you. It also has some yeah, restrictions and uh, some forbiddances. Uh, at the commencement of a battle, parties are introduced and typically start around fifty to eighty feet apart, at a respectable distance, and engage at the third sounding of the arena master's war horn. Is when restrictions are lifted. Uh, magic is fully allowed, with the exception of the Enchantment School, which is fully banned from use within gladiatorial comp uh, co uh, da -da. competitions, Combat. as it is fully as it is unsporting and uninteresting to watch. Okay, charms. Um, yeah. You fight for us now. Yeah, no charms, no mind controls, yeah, no, no Enchantment School whatsoever. Uh, also, you may not have... Everybody checking their spell. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to <laughs> <Yeah, literally. laughs> I I can't use Sooth. Wait. Ah. Soothe is enchantment. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, wow. You can't use Soothe. Yeah. Oh, right, fair enough. I mean, you, it's, ha, it's... I got healed, baby. It's clearly <laughs> intended as Who needs I can't using use against bless. your opponents. I got taters. So I'm good. It's it's not like it's specifics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's possibly something you could ask about or maybe get away with. Um, but because it's obviously written by the Gladiators Guild, who, like, well, they have resources, are probably not a bunch of wizards. Yeah. Uh, can't even use Third of Doom. <laughs> Dirge of Doom oh is probably a no. I don't have a but, single one in my deck except for this one. But uh, it also says that any kind of alchemical or magical effects upon competitors before the third sounding of the horn are disallowed and will result in an immediate forfeiture of the match. Oh, so you can't buff yourself. No pre-buffs, no potions okay. before gotcha. it starts. But you can drink whatever po any alchemical and magical resources during the fight. It's it's go ham. There are no so restrictions. So nothing before the third horn. Got Juggernaut it. time, There is baby. no restrictions as to what you can use after the third sounding of the horn beyond uh, no, the frown upon enchantment magic. I'm going to stick somebody to no the fallen. And there is no looting of the fallen, as their gear is generally 
passed on to either their patron, their sponsor, or becomes the property of the combatants' family. The uh, payment imagine. that you get is that which the Gladiators Guild provides and not that which you take from your opponents. Imagine being an enchantment-focused wizard coming into this, and you're like, it's called a bard. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's called, it's a, called bard. a bard. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite, but All yeah. my cantrips are enchantment. Oh boy, it feels good there to be a sorcerer. Also, uh, some more in here about the general lines of things here. And while the waiver and everything is appreciating the vigor and the fortitude of those willing to stake their bone and blood on the sands of the gladiatorial pit, this is a venue of entertainment. And you are highly encouraged to displays of spectacle and skill to play as much to the crowd as you are against your opposition. We're wearing the dresses. No. No. <laughs> no. Wait, can we like spend actions to hype the crowd? You as can in... absolutely totally would. spend an action to hype the crowd. Yeah, there so we, we get go. that we got See, there, but I you definitely you. can. All right, I'm definitely wearing the dress. Oh, Rizme. Give we her some could pom -poms. make this work with magic. Yeah, I Fire know. Fireball the crowd. No. <laughs> <laughs> definitely also a thing in there that while, and this is the, where are the words? Because it's beautiful. Although the occasional accident is to be expected, contestants are to make every effort to avoid harming spectators. <laughs> it's definitely written into the packet. <laughs> not, sure it it so. not sure if it matters, but j if you take a closer look at the contract, when Marshall signed us all up, he may or may not have misspelled everyone's name except his own. It's not legally binding. I didn't sign that. It doesn't matter. Not Ma Marshall, print. doesn't your name have two L's in it? It does. You have three uh, right there. In. There's three Here's on the there. <laughs> it Raz is spelled with three Z's instead of two. Raz R's backwards. And the R's no are backwards. R. There's not even an R. Also notice <laughs> everything is written in crayon. There you go. Because <laughs> it's Marshall. Wait, how would you misspell my name? Because when I say it in character, it's like Turush. I've misspelled he gets it your right. name it's, it's many times. No, how he's asking it? about how specific. It's, yeah. it's, no, no, he it's, got your Marshall name right. Marshall wrote it as T backwards R O O S H. We're, we're talking, I, we're talking like Winnie so the Pooh like the stuff definition here. At least he can write. Yeah. He's doing okay. a lot better. So The lessons are paying off. That's, been, that's good. You've been working with him. Yeah, I, was, I try to learn, boss. I promise. I wasn't saying like it's bad you misspelled my name. I was curious. How? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, it's been one of the funnier if you got it you, right. You, you were got saying all about of Resme's name right. Hmm? You were saying yeah. about my outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Resme. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, look, we, we simply want Prone's practicality, but perhaps we could actually use some illusions or something to sort of accentuate it, give it sort of like, you know, flow also, and penance, or make have, his beard really shine. Have you seen what ah. I have in my dresser? Well, I also had another suggestion, if you would hear me out. Huh? I may or may not have the suggestion of like not saying every match but in between like the first match definitely has to be all of us say like next time we do it or whatever maybe just the four of us and then a certain uh you know scaly friend of ours could do some uh research in the background that's an certainly not an idea some nice pockets you got there it'd be a shame if they were empty in a minute so that way we could find out whatever happened to One Eye and what Sandy Claus is really up to. Well, if we want to know what happened to One Eye, we could just go ask him. He's not dead. Is True, he dead? But I feel like no, he's not. I was under the impression I, he was I, dead. Uh, I, you, you, you misunderstood. But okay. from what I've been getting the impression at when I was over there getting the information in the first place, it seemed like he wasn't very um, talkative about what happened. I think you may be a little bit old to believe in Sandy Claus. He got he got forced down, didn't he? <laughs> he lost he, he lost he lost a match. It was quite public. True. He might uh, not like talking about it. I, I, I feel like there's more to it than just losing a match, though. That's distinctly Call possible. it a gut feeling. And no, it's not because I'm hungry. Well, especially if the uh, if, if, if uh, the goldsmiths uh, guild called their, uh, a triad plant, was it? Perhaps the reason why that they're they're squeezing as much gold as they can out of the gladiators guild is to try to go and make payments to the triad to finance their operations. I mean, it's possible. That's why I figured that we might as well try and get what information while we can while trying to be... A, make some money and be entertaining while doing it. Mm, mm, and, you know, uh, let's let's be honest. I want to have a little bit of fun. Oh, Marshall, yeah, 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 yeah I had no idea. <sighs> I can't don't get me wrong. I thought the heist was entertaining, but I got bored. I didn't get to smash anything. You got to break like three cells worth of bars and shackles. But they're not people. Yes, they're... Um. Yeah. I don't know. We gotta <laughs> Wait, fix. Hold on. Okay. There's nothing I want to reprioritize more Marshall's um, education to, you know, normal societal thinking. Good luck with I that. I think he's been murdering things for way too long. 
But they we just, need him to keep murdering things. Yeah, so but he needs to restrain himself a little yeah, bit. Play to your strength. See, yeah. <laughs> see but, if I don't practice a little bit every day, I get rusty, and then that's not good for everyone. The can't people I'm thinking long term. Whenever you will be you know, smashing people. Whenever he stops smashing people. Whenever, whenever y'all, whenever we've saved the world and it's all over, and he doesn't have any more people to smash. When you unless you start a triad, runs out of members. Yeah, like he's what's what's he going to smash then? Normal random citizens? Is he going to be abandoned on the highway? I wouldn't want to fight him if he was abandoned on the highway. I mean. Imagine if I'm not eating. Uh, drinking. Level sixteen <laughs> bandit. Yeah. Just like, Give me your money. <laughs> Just stop. I'll be taking your three silvers now. <laughs> Earthquake, the whole cart falls. It's not even I was about to say at level point. twenty, I could do that every day. He has a good time robbing caravans. That's all he wants, really. He knows he can take the entire mercenary company that's guarding it by himself. Dude, so I he's mean, just like I'm having. He doesn't even take anything. He just beats them up. <laughs> <laughs> See, like I'm the world's worst Batman. Uh, like, he's like, think about it though. If, if, if Zerk See, and Sniggles were level 16, they would still be going around going, give us your meats. Like, you think that would change anything of being level 16? Well, in all fairness, it's a team meats. effort. I smash the things and he takes what's left. Right, and the rest of us are just sort of there, I suppose. Uh, well, I'm you not get there. rewards from whatever we snatch up. Hey, I'm downstairs. just imagining, like, a level 20 bandit barbarian wandered into a level 3 zone. <laughs> the army shows up. Of, it's full of, like, a level 5 whatever. And earthquake. Army's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think earthquake, does earthquake do damage? I don't think it does damage. It, 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 um, it, it, it does. says it cast can, earthquake. It can. It can do it damage. It can't have like collapsed the ceiling on somebody. Which is actually like it, super easy to do. Yeah, but it doesn't like natively do damage. If you earthquake so, somebody in a field, they're fine. They just. I suppose like I have no idea what you're talking about with this gladiator skill thing, but you guys tell me yes. where to stand, what you want me to wear, and what you want me to do, and I'll be there. Your best dress. Oh, he shouldn't have said that. No, no, yeah, you wanted me to. I come out see looking. I wouldn't. I wouldn't wear evolved. something that you wouldn't like to get dirty or damaged. Oh, don't worry. It'll be taken care of. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Good news is, I can't cast spells. I can hyper. I can hyper crowd. You can do magic. You use spells that are literally all enchantment, aren't they? No, no, not all of them. <laughs> I have Wait, a lot that aren't. You can use um. I forgot the name of the cantrip. You throw a marble. Yeah, to the kinetic projectile. projectile. That's not enchantment. Wow. I don't think hitting the crowd is going to get them all excited. So, um, <laughs> with plans in order to, I suppose, move on to the Gladiators Guild next, or at least to go make some money in the arena, which isn't... We're not necessarily influencing the Gladiators Guild, but, I mean, it seems like it could be easy. We just become the head of the Gladiators Guild. Is this Oblivion? Yes. You just that's fight. exactly that's, what I was that's, thinking. That's how you become I mean, the head of the guild. You just how kill we, everybody. You just go do yeah. all if the guild quests. If you kill everybody lines. else in arena, in arena fights, then you're the arena master. Yeah. Now. We're not going to know it's I've Oblivion. I've played fantasy RPGs I before. Have, that's how you, you get the head of any guild. You just yeah, do their quest line. Marshall <laughs> will be, finally be the captain now. <laughs> Politics, <laughs> small attacks. No. If this was Oblivion, I would already win. You just go in with full chameleon armor and you win. We just stand in the middle of looking at these stand in the middle. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go punch a horse. Having a, had a wildly... <laughs> what? Having had a wildly successful rescue mission today, the group of you can rest easy, having gotten one of the guilds very profoundly on your side at this point. You are pretty confident that pending a re-kidnapping, uh, the Master <laughs> of the Jewelers Guild will probably vote alongside you with the Council of Guilds in the coming weeks. The next morning... As you all awaken, readying yourselves for your daily preparations, nobody having the heart or the balls to tell Marshall that all he did was sign a waiver and you're not committed to anything yet. Still seems like it could be, you know, it's a gladiator's guild. This could be a decent inn, making a name for yourself, going in there and just mopping some sad peasants who signed up because they wanted 1,500 gold because that was a lot to them. And I don't want to hurt anybody. But you gotta admit, Marshall has a good point about what I'm he's going with. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. You don't have to hurt anybody. Marshall will hurt everybody. <laughs> yeah. You just man. make sure Marshall doesn't get hurt. You just enable Marshall to hurt everybody. No, don't forget, <laughs> the paper also includes. It, it said monsters and demons, right? Monster, beasts and demons. Beasts and, and demons. demons. Beasts, demons, or the elk. Look, if a big giant elephant thing is running at me, okay, fine. We turn it into dinner. But I'm not hurting anybody. 
You, you leaned out and it made the spooky noise. <laughs> Mateus is disconnected. Is, Mateus is disconnected. <laughs> so, after, uh, you know you need to be there before noon, which leaves you plenty of time to have a fine morning meal and prepare and, prepare and you know, just spend your morning readying either mentally or mentally but excited to go bully some nerds in the gladiatorial arena. All Marshall right. actually uh, sits down with the more battle-ready members of his team and like goes over some uh, classic Dwarven-style battle tactics in gladiator combat. What do you got? Oh. So he terribly doodles in the sand with a stick. Like, okay. You can, you can, you're literally in a state where you can draw on paper, but you make sure to take everybody <laughs> outside so you can draw in the dirt with a He's stick. He's super because excited. It's, it's more thematic. It's like you can't make battle plans on paper. You got to draw them in the dirt. <laughs> tradition. Dwarven tradition. Dwarves have rocks. They don't have dirt. So, okay. My idea with the whole gladiator thing, if we're first fighting... I don't know exactly what we're fighting first right off the bat, but if we're fighting a big monster of some kind, obviously we stick to the battle tactics of me and Roshin. We go head on. Roshin does the sneaky sneaky and does a flanking over here. And you two uh, pretty much sit there and be pretty and keep us alive. I can't keep you alive. What? What? You die too fast. Not, not as much. I got taters. Uh, I'll take care of that. The group of you would make your way over to the arena where Marshall had been just a few days prior um, and had made a fairly solid impression of all these sure people. I, what if he was drawing while we were walking? <laughs> so we only got to see what he was currently it's just drawing. Trailing line of crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, I never took a hundred other people just walking <laughs> over as you go. Listen, I never took the stick out of the crowd as we're getting there. <laughs> It's cursive battle plans. You just never stop drawing. He literally is drawing a line back to your hideout. On the <laughs> See, I'm smart in my own way. The only person that can read them is me. But you come back in. I'm wearing my Kintargo outfit. <laughs> and some of the some of the gladiators that you would have spoken with the other day, you might have got a fresh enter there. Uh, polishing up some armor, getting some things ready. Uh, clearly much more in a bit of a zone today. Oh, hey, Frank. Toil day. A couple of them would nod and acknowledge you some smiles, and most of them are kind of focused. Uh, almost trance-like, as you know, obviously, toil day is big show day. Mm -hmm. That's when they they pull the big crowds. This is when they're here to earn their money. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of them, which is another very squat dwarven man that looks almost like he has just physically been flattened with how wide he is, and even how flat the top of his head is compared to the general height of his body. Has a mostly toothless grin. Oh. Up as he comes in. Oh, you came back, did hey, you? Hey, how you doing? You see, that's why I don't. His guard slipped. It looks like that mallet just caught him square on the head and shrunk him about Shh. a couple inches. There, not too loud. He's sensitive. You also caught him in the mouth. Hey, you're coming to do a show today, Marshal. Oh yeah, he's and right. these are my teammates. It smells like sweat and blood. It's kind of, it does very smell like sweat and blood. More blood sir than this one. Arena. It's a much she stronger scent. She's wearing a black lace corset dress. Like, she looks like she's going Where's... to a Kentargo party. He just kind of Wait, looks across the three of you. Well, that one. Right, I'm one of them, yes. Us two. I'm here against my will. Trust me, looks all deceiving, but they're very reliable. He's not, it's not, he's not here against his will. He just doesn't think it's a good idea. It's really not a good idea. I don't think you realize that the caveats and rules inside this packet of information bar me from most of the magical effects that you're used to. Oh. I'm going to be of no use in a combat other than looking at the crowd and going, hey crowd, I exist to oh, funny rat want, man. He one of them witches what uh, goes around mind control and things. Uh, I, cast, I cast Inspire Courage as I'm talking and everyone in the room is considered an ally for this. He's pumping a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> and I look at him and this. I do that. He's basically one of those things that tells boring stories, but somehow inspires everybody. I don't know. It's making me feel a lot more confident. Oh, that's what's all that the matters. With that? Well, it's. Con <laughs> I pull out the what's, packet. What's right the, here, it says no problem? enchantment school, and that is a school of enchantment magic that I learned. Eight well, years ago. I he, thought they what told me that was the thing you signed, so if they cut your arm off, they don't have to pay you. Oh, nothing. sorry. Wrong page. Sorry. 
I, I mean, it. it's all just yeah, it's all marks the same. to me. But from, I, I've seen uh, a bunch of, you know, them witchy types going in through the arena. And right, right. You know, it occurs to me that the ones who wrote so, that contract uh, might actually not know how about? magic works. Perhaps you what's could what's actually get this guy's name? exception. You probably honestly never even got it. Most of these people would have more titles uh, than names. Uh, and this guy's just known as Lifter. Okay, what a name well, I'll hammer. just go with that. <clears throat> so, so Lifter, tell me. You wouldn't happen to know what our first match is, or did they do they not, you know, make it a surprise or something? You just got in here. You even signed up with the arena master yet? I, I thought I did. No. You, I just watched you walk in the door. <sighs> we might have more steps to. Do you got to sign up to get a schedule today. I don't know. I it's, mean, oh, that's right. I only signed a waiver. My, my apologies. They got it, that weird worm thing, and then worm. I know that they came from. Oh, there's oh, what are their names? Is it there's, purple? Uh, the, the Bloody Blades are here today, but I think they're fighting some kind of big machine they brought in from Galt. As long as they don't give you the Dune Shaker, you're probably fine. As long oh, as I was you hoping... weren't lying to me the other day when you came here talking. Oh, absolutely not. Trust me. I don't even know how to Your lie. Your buddy here has talked up a hell of a storm. Oh, I'm sorry he has, but he's actually probably... Uh, sorry, I'm Lifter, by the way. Oh, Rasheen, good to... to meet you. Hello. I'm their manager. No, that's a pigeon that we eat for emergencies. Actually, he'd make a good manager now that you think about it. He don't it. look very eaten. No, I'm I the manager. I said if we have an emergency. I'm their manager. Well, how many talking animals are you bringing into the pit? Wait, but Taz could talk the entire time. No, you can talk now. Well, he just make squeaking noises. Yeah. Well, you can talk now, though. Yeah, you can talk now. Well, Lifter, in all fairness, I did tell you my best friend is a gnome druid. You got one, <laughs> two, three. Don't count me. Four talking animals. <laughs> I mean, oh, they look at you, Sheik. He hasn't, hasn't, don't let he hasn't this heard me talk yet. Oh, oh this one. Well, you're like, a, he's assuming at this point by the yeah. fact that you're a seven foot tall Ten humanoid foot tall. lizard oh, man. Eight foot tall. Eight thank foot you. tall humanoid lizard uh, man. Don't let this one assume. Uh, just for record, lift that. That's actually my boss. It's true. Don't let his looks deceive well, you. Well, it's going to be a show with nothing else. I ain't never seen somebody bring a whole zoo to the pit to fight with before. Oh, I promise you. Yeah. Everyone will have a great cut. time. You got to go talk the arena master, <laughs> though. He's You got to get on the schedule. Right. So anyway, good on you, Lifter. Uh, I ain't doing nothing today but watching, lad. But best of luck in there. Oh, thank you, Lifter. All right. Come on, guys. Huh? Sign us up, Marshall. It's your show. And there's a man standing kind of upright with a... A polished but very battered breastplate uh, that seems like it could pretty easily have a lot of the damage repaired in it and just hasn't. He's clearly taken steps, of course, to make it presentable, but left the battle damage in. You know, those with those dings and dents and smaller mm -hmm. punctures. Uh, it, clearly, you can see where it's been melded back together on one side. It was once a large gash that has been reattached, but it's just been left there, perhaps for prestige, perhaps, you know, yeah, to someone, give off a certain impression. Someone cast an ending on it. The man's... <laughs> It's got to show your experience. The man's got a fairly short cropped, uh, fairly bright ginger hair that runs all the way down, a bit thicker on the sides than it is on the actual top, almost matching the huge mustache he has sitting atop his lip, and absolutely nothing down on the chin below. Oh, God. Uh, and as he looks across the grip of you, Hello. You're looking to take part today? Yep. Uh, pulls out the waiver. Where there the... you go. Here's my waiver. I'm ready to sign up my team. We're the Takes heroes it. of Breach Hill. Shakes the beard hairs out of it. Heroes of Breach Hill, you say? Yep. All right. He puts this down and uh, turns around to a ledger he's got behind him. How many? You got five. Five of you here. Plus the bird and the rat. The... Both of them. The... Those are snacks. Don't mind them. I'll just write five. Thank you. All right. So you said heroes of Breach Hill is the name of you. Yep. Yo. Yep. Oh, it's cursed me. And perhaps we should actually come up with a better stage name. One no. that's not quite so well known. Well, I already wrote Heroes of Breach Show. No. Oh, We're no. going with it. So, right. that's okay. fine. I can't unwrite the ink. We'll go with that one. Ah, well, it is what you, know, it you send off the stuff. Uh, you all look surprisingly more competent than most of walk in here. Even from Catapesh. You, you, know, you look nope. like a yes. All do, right. Do, do none of them look like they look from, like, they're, like they're from Catapesh? I'm, I'm from, from Taldor. Taldor. I mean, I'm not from Katabesh, but it's... it's I do have Truth a look. be told, I can't entirely tell with a couple of your members here, but, I mean, you two look pretty northern to me. Oh, sorry. And uh, you don't look like you've seen the eastern side of the inner seas at about any point in your life, so... I, I, I've been traveling quite a bit for years. I've so. seen a few come through here, right, and all these... Yeah, uh, fair enough. Schedules. If anyone... Okay. 
Yeah, um, it looks like they're from this area. I'm gonna give you one. Dune Shaker. Okay. Um, here Fun. in a couple of hours, it's uh, you're not gonna be fighting against another team or anything. I don't. I mean, first timers here. Uh, we got a big. I don't really know what to call it. It's a crab spider thing. We call it Dune Shaker. Uh, some of the lads in the Imperial Union of Breeders bought it in last week. I only shown it a couple of times. Is so it edible? Oh no, and no one's killed it yet. So. Well, I'm gonna find out. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> if this is actually a bit of a resource for you, you probably didn't wouldn't want us to go that far, would you? Unless you would. I mean, look, the animals we pay in here get a couple of shows out, and there ain't much that gets the crowd riled up a whole lot more than a good, full two-handed massacre. Can't do that so much with the team battles and the, uh, the army skirmishes, but you can definitely do it with a big crab spider thing. That's fair. You get the opportunity to beat that thing to death and give the crowd a good bloody show, you do it. You'll I'm... well earn that purse. Oh, I, I promise you, we'll put on the show. I hope he's not related to Harold. That says that should this start going the other direction, uh, you can signal two finger and thumb out uh, to our men in the wings if you wish to yield, and we'll try to get the thing off you as best as we can. <laughs> yield. Ha! That's a joke. It's all right. We can he leave if we want. Yield. You're more than welcome to die in the arena, too. You signed the waiver. It ain't going to cost us nothing. Look, uh, appreciate it. We'll keep it in mind. Right, so where do we get set up? All right, well, we're going to have you here in probably about 30 minutes or so. You read through the rules and stuff. You can use... You're fine, uh, an animal in here. You can use whatever you want after the third blow of the horn. You're good to go. Right. Uh, just don't He's... be casting any fancy magic. She used any weird potions before that. Got and it. Uh, don't mind control the thing, but beyond that, it's an animal. That's right. good. You can do what you, whatever you can do. It's kind of... You can grins a little bit through that bit. All right. Is Heroes it... Breach, we'll call you. All right. Thank you, sir. Is it going to respect the horn? Do you have chains on it? Or this something? ain't gonna come. It ain't gonna come out. But I mean, I guess if it jumps at you, you can you can fight back. But they should have two blows of the horn before they even unleash the thing. I'm just checking. They they have a system. I promise. It'll work. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it'll probably be fine. Honestly, no, this is probably gonna matter. Uh, I'll give you twenty seconds for your signaling. All right, we'll let you know. All right, thanks. Come on, guys, let's have a seat over here. <sighs> Pulls out his flask. 20 Good. seconds. Good news. Anyone, anyone, uh, pick me up? 20 seconds is news. a long time. <laughs> it's a it's not a chance. Huh? Pick me up, anyone? Well, oh, yes, yes, actually, don't mind. Uh, the good news invitation. for Raz is we're fighting an animal. Yes. It's not going to know what enchantment spells are. Enchantment. <laughs> As you turn... Uh, around from this uh, lifter back there in the corner, like waving both hands over oh, head. What's up? Let's Lift in air. <laughs> you get in there? Oh yeah, uh, we're in. Well, the guy didn't put you on the bloody blades, did they? Yeah, you said like anything except for Dune Shaker. Now that you're yeah, I mean, finding the bloody blades is is probably not great, but I mean, at least they they won't kill you. Probably. We're fine. Uh, oh, no, we're fighting the big spider crab thing. Oh, it's... I knew we should have. Oh, I knew you said, he should... he said something about it, and it just slipped my mind. Wait, they gave you Dune Shaker? Yep. yep. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, it was nice to meet you when you came through. You seemed like a well enough guy. Uh, the smart move would be to get in there, maybe take a couple of licks and then signal the, you know, the guild, the, the guildsmen to come out and pull it off of you. You might want to do it sooner rather than later. But, They're not the same. I, I put my hand on Lifter's shoulder. Lifter, body, pal. Do you see what I'm wearing around my neck? Oh, uh, the, the hand thing? The, the, as the guy like, head, like shark, twitches. It's got long teeth and way too many eyes. This is one of my also, many. Also, it's furry. It's one of my also, many it's trophies. <laughs> different color. It's one of and my It looks many like it doesn't different. open the same way. <laughs> well, and there's eyes on both sides of it, which is kind of, it's not really shark like at all now that I think about it. <laughs> it was just the first thing that came to mind when I was I'm looking. just going to promise good, you, this good. thing is probably w worse than what we're about to fight. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> not, I don't no. think that's the case. Hey, I don't Mr. Think Lister. So. Let me. Can, right. you, can, you, just, Listen, what, can you give me a description of Doom Shaker besides Crab Spider? Oh, crab spider is pretty good, actually. It, That's it way better good? than what I would have said. How many, how many legs? Uh, a bunch. I don't know. It's, it's real big. I think yeah. it's probably bigger than this entire prep yeah, area. Does, does, it, does it fight in any specific way? Is that an appreciable uh, difference between like seven and eight? I and mean, ten. we killed a dragon or oh, two. Oh, so. I've seen it. It kind of just eats people, and it's got little pincers that sever them in half. That, uh, <laughs> you know, I used to, I was a three-man act a week ago. It was lifter, presser, and thrower. And Well, you're at presser and lifter, uh, presser and thrower in half. 
and uh, it took about two seconds. We we were doing such important things, and we've descended so quickly into farce. I'm really not quite sure what to think about it. No, 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 it. it's all part of it. It's very important. Listen. Don't worry, Resme. You'll see. You'll see the, the Marshall's just... plan come together. Res- Soon enough. Miss, Miss Resume, this is just to ensure Mr. Marshall is satisfied for the coming weeks. I... I'll, I'll put it this way. Last thing. You know how, you know, uh, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Raz. You're wrong. <laughs> Look, anyway. Mark, <laughs> do, you, do you really think you and your friends can kill this thing? Oh, that's not You're bad. You're talking a real big game. Oh, trust me. I've, I've killed, killed some pretty big dragon. things. Yeah. I, there's magma dragons. Oh, well, it's like well, a There's red, one less of them now. There's one less. I, I, I helped decapitate it with it's me like hammer. A, imagine just a red dragon covered in magma. Look, that's a this, good. That's good. This dune figure has been... This has been bad. You know what? As I promise, when we win, I'll bring back one of its legs and we can feast on it later. I don't know there's a whole lot of meat in it. They're kind of like spiky spider legs, really. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll I find promise. out. Perhaps but you have to stew it first. This thing is killed... Look. It's not just my brother and my buddy I used to perform with. This thing's killed a dozen gladiators in the week it's been here. Roisin. Goodness gracious. Roisin. Santa Claus is bringing the thing out every damn week. Roisin. Oh, you... Wait till you see my kill count. Wait, wait a minute now. <laughs> if this is... Do you have 100 gold? Yes. I have an idea how we might be able to get some of them on our side. Well, I... you killed Dune Shaker and you're going to be in the good graces of damn near everyone in this prep area. Would you place some bets for us? Oh, on behalf of the other gladiators uh, betting the, on us? The competitors, we, we don't get to gamble. We just get the prize pools. No, no, no. I, uh, I, I meant the people, on behalf of people not participating. Because you're not participating, right? I mean, I'm not, but I'm a known name. Really. I'm a gla- I'm, I've been a gladiator. I've been you're not allowed to place a bet? Forever. No, we get paid out of the purses. It's unsporting for us to bet on the fights. Ah, uh, I hmm. see. I was in your packet. Did they give you a packet? I thought you could read. He's the only one who's actually read it. Oh, they had to tell me I can't read it. But I can read some of the words. Well, we're we're (laughs) teaching him. If if this person, if if this, if this beast has taken, has taken those near and dear to you, I had no idea it was actually so lethal and so vicious. Don't worry, we'll take it down for you. And we'll name it for all those who are fallen. What are their names? Well, just give me a list of them. And uh, she's supposed to uh, scratch them down. He'll, he'll rattle off, of course, start with uh, <laughs> Presser and Thrower, and then uh, a couple of other lads Presser that have been. Thrower. I don't know, those are his boys. Uh, but a couple of other teams of some of the Gladiator regulars that have been in here, uh, as well as the, there's a bunch he just doesn't know. Uh, in the beginning, when they first unleashed it, he, he tells you a very detailed and deeply unsettling account of how its first fight was a bunch of literal no-names who had just signed up for the purse, uh, who had been told they were fighting hyenas <laughs> and came into the arena to find a 40-foot-tall giant sand demon that killed them all in two seconds and threw their corpses into the stands for the next 30 in very tiny, unpleasant pieces. Huh. Very detailed story he has. But you learn a little bit from this as well about how Dune Shaker operates. Uh, it appears the inside of the arena is not floored. It is dirt and sand. And Dune Shaker seems to be able to swim through it as easily as a fish in water. And does typically set... that He's never seen it set upon a foe that he it did not eviscerate in the blink of an eye. The thing shoots out of the sand, and they're dead. Uh, he's seen them fight a larger team, where he went up and ripped apart two or three of them, and then disappeared back into the sand. Oh, it's like the purple worm. To emerge worm. again from near a different direction and ravage the rest. The thing is terrifyingly fast and ridiculously deadly. Good but though. exactly what it does, we can find out after a midstream break here. Yes. Because I think this is a solid interim moment. Yes, yes. You're all gonna it's, die. Break it, time. It's a I've solid had, something. You guys will be fine. You're the heroes of Breach Hill. I'll even tell the... Lifter I'll bring back one of its teeth as a prize for him. I've had to use the potty since we started. Well, good news. You can do that now. Yep. Please. We're gonna take our midstream break. Anyway. We'll be up for a couple of minutes. Use the potty yourselves. Refill <laughs> your drinks. Get some snacks. I'm a yeah, child. 5'10 before we sit back down to battle 
whatever the dune shaker is in the arena here and i'm sure it's going to go spectacularly for everyone yeah. we get to try out all of our fancy level 16 abilities because we are that now after the rescue of mild Ice killer big numbers boys here we go we'll be right back welcome back everybody Aha! and welcome to the arena where we are going to go make good decisions no. in the pursuit of we've already made is bad it, decisions is it too late to call all sick <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i thought we made a great decision my new name is betsy biceps what based on what i don't know <laughs> the complete lack What's of biceps scores? Zero. <laughs> As a strong. It's not ten. It's just zero. Yeah, it's actually zero. It's a negative five strength modifier. She can barely pull herself out of bed in the morning. She needs assistance to stand up from a sitting position. Like, hang out well, with you people. Rolling these dice is impossible. She Some can't lift the, the the metal ones. They're too heavy. They're too heavy. Um, you <laughs> have thirty minutes, which sounds like an impressive amount of time, but uh, would pass relatively quickly down cool. here. Cool, I need to I need to pay some bets. All right, Resme heads out to go attempt to place some bets. I Heading out and around to... to the uh, primary entry of the arena. I'm going to veil myself. You see that the crowds are impressively massive. And after about 30 minutes have passed, Resme and Trishik have not come back yet. They are definitely no conceivable way they're getting up to a booth, the place of bet in that kind of time, trying to get out of the prepping area and around. So. I would see the line and just go back. <laughs> like, I'm not going to wait that long. Fair enough. And say, right, that's fine. I guess we'll just, just us three then. I would, <laughs> we'll three I, minutes. I'll see the line. Oh, I'll dimension door to the front of it. <laughs> Someone uh, will pick you up and throw you. Make me a yeah. fortitude save. No, no, no. I'll be invisible. That's not what the fortitude saves for. Make me a fortitude for. save. You will invisibly dimension over the front and then cut normally. Okay, make me a fortitude save, but it's worse now. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a 36. Okay, after taking about 11 points of bludgeoning damage from very upset gamblers, uh, Resume makes her way back <laughs> down. But I'm serious, put on your sheet. Dude. Resume makes her way back down. I, I still don't take any damage. <laughs> False life is there. Yeah. <laughs> Beat up a weird image for a bit. You're like, okay, I'm sorry. Apologize profusely. Make your way back down to the setup area. Uh, you can hear a bit of the goings on in the arena from out here, but not a whole lot other than just kind of a low roar that just permeates fairly consistently until the arena master motions to group of you over here. How's a breach, y'all? Yep. And sets you up to a staging area. You go through a short hallway that connects into a wide uh, 20 foot across dirt floor chamber uh, with an iron portcullis barred both ways sat in front of you. Sitting on the dirt, you can literally see the spiked bases of each of the individual beams bit a few inches into the dirt. And you can see the true expanse of the massive pit before you. Now, clearly you could have seen this building from the outside, that's not, news but being down here on the floor everything looks a little bit different it's 300 feet across easily the, you could contain an entire football field in here this is almost literally a football stadium and the walls around the outside extend up 35 40 feet above you where the roaring crowds of thousands of patrons fill the stands up above. You have a, a small amount of time to take this in while one of the uh, small heralds, a younger, possibly not even fully mature lad of the Gladiators Guild here, uh, is watching for some kind of a signal through the bars and sees it about a minute after you get in here. Pulling a lever which opens the huge portcullis slowly with a ratcheting iron clank in front of you, and then motioning the group of you to head out into the sands. Marshall has the biggest grin on his face. <laughs> and as you walk out of the main doorway here into the arena itself, no longer insulated by this little staging room, everything, even your own footfalls in the sand, become almost inaudible under 
the roar of the crowd surrounding you on all sides here. It is Mar near deafening. Marshall already has his axe out and he just does the, you know. You can see poses. <laughs> there was an overwatch, uh, a stand on your right up above, which is mostly clear with a much fewer, a smaller group of people and a few heralds with trumpets blaring, attempting to cut through this crowd, uh, the sound ringing down into the pit with you as you walk into an otherwise empty arena. Four huge stone pillars stand in kind of a squared shape, uh, spaced around the inside of it, each sitting about 30 feet tall, uh, capping with a flat top about 10 feet below the edge of the stands, uh, each of them maybe 10, 15 feet around. You can tell that above you, a herald is announcing something, but from down here, his voice is washed out almost entirely by the cheering crowd. And all you can really hear is trumpets and screaming. <laughs> no audible words, just noise. Nothing it's, new. I'll join with Marshall waving to the crowd and swinging the sword around. Think about it. That's all that we ever hear is trumpet and the screaming of Scarlet Triad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. But as you enter, and uh, you get closer in here, you can see that this sand, and as you walk through it, it's not deep sand. It's not like you're walking across a beach, a beach here. The sand is maybe only about an inch deep before it gives way to quite hard packed dirt beneath it. And in certain places throughout the arena, you can already see it's been cast asunder. Uh, no, not enough to form any real piles, but some places that are definitely worn raw. But in the center of this arena, as you approach, in the middle of these four pillars, there is what looks like a much denser, sandy pit. You see the herald up above, gesture down to the group of you, and the noise of the crowd does not change literally at all. You hear a horn sound over the top of all of it with one solemn cry. Well, that's the first one, I think. You're going to want one of these. What? What yeah, is it? Drink yeah. it. But in, no, not, not yet. yet. Not but yet. We have to wait for the third horn. I know, but when, when the third horn goes, drink it. Uh, while we're waiting for this, I better, uh, if my strategy is correct, old slap it. I got two of them. One in this hand, one in this hand. And you hear a metallic slam as the portcullis behind you from which you had entered slams back down, rattling against itself, making no real sound as it connects with the dirt. I'm coming not all the way in here. You stop some distance short of the pillars, maybe 40 feet back from the large pit of ominous sand. You can make out from here a little bit of the voice up above the herald calling out, A new favorite of the good people of Katapesh, of all you fine folk who have come to witness the spectacle the gladiatorial arena has to offer. Those of you fortunate enough may have already seen the bite of his claws and the shearing death of his mandibles. But today, we have five contestants brave enough to stand against the Dune Shaker. And you hear a second blow from the horn, some 10 seconds, 15 seconds removed from the first. The crowd somehow gets louder. I can't hear it, which is weird, because I should definitely hear crowd right now. Um, then times and turn Sirenscape up. Maybe uh, our speakers are being dumb. Can you guys hear it? Not a word. I, I, I don't hear anything. It's cool, in my mind, though. This is the really I'm cool real Sirenscape set that I spent a ton of time on. Why don't I, I hear a lot it? of things. Is it, uh, okay. Is, did, was it the speakers that disconnected? It was early? playing just a second ago. Speakers. Yeah, we're playing music earlier. Then so turn Sirenscape up more. I want to hear things. <laughs> Good. Oh, well. I kind of fall silent. Failed out on us, I guess. Um, we'll but... Figure, we'll figure it out later. As you wait, very unfortunate time for it to uh, weird out on us. It should be explosive cheering. Uh, after a few more seconds of waiting, you all feel a bit of a tremor that kind of rolls through the whole floor of the arena here. Is the whole of the building itself shakes just a little, followed almost immediately by an explosion in the center of the ring. All the sand from this pit 
being cast up and outward, filling an area dozens of feet high and wide as a gargantuan creature of some kind. Crab spider was not a horrible description, honestly. Whatever this thing is, there. It is. Hey, we got it. It is a massive arachnid of some por uh, of some kind, sporting what looks to be eight claw-tipped spiked legs down its sides and two separate pairs of massive angled mandibles open wide mounted on its face. Oh, and as you fine. see oh, this thing, we're here voluntarily, rearing up dozens of feet above the sandy pit. Seemingly uh, very agitated. It slams its forelegs down. This screeching maw Ooh. turned your direction, almost a piercing, shrill screech underlying the crowd as their excitement redoubles once more. And the horn sounds for a third time. Party, roll the initiative. <sighs> you, you have a juggernaut. You can turn it on. Oh, that's a juggernaut elixir yep. you gave me? Okay. I don't know what it is, so I guess I'm gonna be drinking it. Can I roll stealth? No. I can't <laughs> be hiding from this thing? Not yet. Not why, yet. Why not? Okay. Um, the Herald announces that the heroes of Free Chill have surrendered and forfeited their tournament as one of their companions has fled the field at the very arrival of the beast. <laughs> I haven't started and you lost hiding immediately, yet. Then no, I'm you asking, can't roll stealth. I can see you. <laughs> I'm asking if it has eyes, is what I'm asking. Oh, it, well, it definitely senses you one way or the other. It does have yeah. eyes, though. Yeah, it's primary okay. senses is, is looking at you. As is per my habit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sixes for initiative. I, think you can play I mean, you know what? I, I'm okay with mine. I'll cash in too. Oh. Raz really doesn't want to be here. He just don't want to get eaten by the big animal. All right, uh, it's Raz better. Man. That is better. That also has a hero point in your hand. Yeah, I, I gotta trade it in. It's awful. <laughs> Everyone is very shaken by the arrival of this giant spider crab. Oh, today. that was so much worse. <laughs> Why did I do Resume. that? It's gonna be a thirty. Okay, uh, Roshin. Really? I thought I'm right. 35. Rez. 41. Rez is ready. Rez does not want to die. Rez wants to continue being alive. Marshall? 41. Would you like to go first yes. or do you want me to go first? No, okay. Please. Marshall please. is absolutely ready. Is she? 34. Marshall is so ready. It's probably going to go here or here. Let me see. Take this nice metal noise foundry day here. Hey, and I get another one. <laughs> Would you believe? <laughs> 41. Oh. Ooh. Man. Three-way tie in the 41 dimension. I Me wish I was Marshall. an elf. And if you want to be in a different configuration there, I put Marshall in the front because I figured his general excitement was going to put him at the front. That sounds reasonable. Front of yeah. the group here, but that's like, just how I set the map up. You don't More have like to. Marshall forced himself into the front. <laughs> He is. Come on, so come on, I want to play. Come he's on, let's more go. More better than he's ever been in his life. Uh, punctuating this screech, the creature flings itself forward from this pit of sand, almost gliding across the grounds of the arena. These. Uh, token. Oh, these are large yeah, we, we, token. We I don't token. have an actual token for him because he's gargantuan, so they don't make tokens that big. So he's our stand-in. Um, that'd be funny because it literally blocks all the table cam. I know, it'd be right? Hilarious. Yep. Uh, but. Uh, launching itself forward across the, scan, uh, the sand, darting 30 feet out from its pit, um, lashing forward with these incredibly huge, again, serrated forelegs. It has, it'll be 20 feet away from Marshall as the clock comes slamming down. Uh, 30 feet movement gets it 25 feet away. Then it moves 35 feet, because okay. it's not even close to its maximum. Yes, <laughs> so, just, just wondering. And a claw is going to come down for a 43. That is a regular hit. Grab me some dice here. Did I get through? I gave you that hero point. Yeah. Right? Okay. You can give me another one if you want. Nah, that's cool. Uh, it is going to connect for 35 points of slashing damage as the first claw comes down. Is it 35? 35. Okay. 
Uh, and as this impacts and immediately setting upon the party here, the crowd is, again, just deafening, almost drowning out the massive slams in this thing's legs as they, uh, as they strike down a marshal right in front of you. Uh, it hits Marshall. Marshall does not go down. It seems confused for a moment. <laughs> it slaps it, me and he just, I'm just... <laughs> and as, you're, as this leg does not immediately just eviscerate you onto the ground with the serrated, again, it's almost like the head of a carpenter's saw that it brings down on you. Mm -hmm. It pulls it back for a sec and sort of uh, readjusts a little bit. Scooting a little bit further back, centering its body down the center. It doesn't, doesn't move from the square at all. I like how it's confused. As if, yeah, it's like it's it doesn't understand what happened. Uh, puts its little forelegs up kind of defensively. You see it turn its head up to this screaming crowd. And it's clearly very agitated um, by just the general din of the spectacle here. Uh, and it is actually going to throw both of its poor legs up and its mandible's still wide and just kind of hiss out at the crowd. It's upset. The crowd is extremely happy. They're having a great time. Um, and it is going to seem to get angrier. A lot angrier. And it is going... Uh, it can't do anything against everybody all the way back there, so it's going to focus all of this hate back down on the small man standing in front of him. And again, slam a pair of forelegs now down on Marshall, kind of hitting and ripping with these saw-like forelimbs. For second attack, 53. It is not a crit. Oh, wait, 53. There's yeah, no it planet. Is. 53 I was like, wait, wait, wait. You crit. said 53. My bad. <laughs> uh, absolutely no universe. First off, fortification room. room. Dink. That's a crit. Uh, you can hear yes. a point. I'm going to hear a point that. <laughs> Please no. Please no. That's worse, so yeah, that's a crit. Uh, is it flat At least you can't get fill. double crit. I can't so get you double can't, crit. You can't get double crit. Uh, and Yet. as this one uh, connects to the marshal, it's going to seemingly put a lot more force behind this blow here. <laughs> oofies. Um, oofies. Oofies. I like those dice. It's going to be 86 points of slashing damage. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, boy. It's not crazy. And as that claw lands against you, uh, sending you off balance, the second claw is going to connect almost in tandem. For 24, uh, sorry, 27 points of slashing damage. 27? This is a separate attack, so if you, I don't think you currently have, actually have any regular resistance right now. She's bludgeoning, right? Uh, not, well, I'm not raging right now, so yeah. I don't have any resistance on her. And it lands these two claws on you. You are still standing there. Like, you're clearly bloodied. I, I spit out a little bit of blood and go, come on. <laughs> that's all you got, Mr. I don't think that's all he's got, Marshall. Hi. So he plants all these legs on the ground and shoots himself another 10 feet forward, how launching many, the whole of his bulk. How many Marshall. actions? I was about to say, how many have? actions does this? is the third. Oh my god. So he said they killed 30. everything in two seconds. It has to have a lot of stuff going on. This is the third. Um, there is no limit to the amount of times it can use pouncing around, so it's gonna do it again. Huh. Okay, good news. That one went down. Okay, so... Let's see. Second attack. Second attack? Third attack is what I meant. I was about Second to say. Attack. Third attack. It hit me like three times. The third attack. One of those was just a range. Don't worry about it. Third attack. Uh, it's only a 41 with a minus 10. Oh, that's just a regular hit then. Regular hit. Only a 41. And you see how it killed all of its previous competition in two seconds. Mm -hmm. It becomes frighteningly apparent. As this thing chomps down on Marshall for 49 points of piercing damage. Oof. Okay. It is done. Raz. Hypercognition. <laughs> What is it? 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 <laughs> I could use my new ability, but I think that's a bad idea. I don't know what I can tell you that you don't. It's an ant lion, but big. Already know. It's one action. It's hypercognition. This true. is true. As it launches up towards Marshall and Raz is thinking really hard, Marshall, make me an acrobatics check. <laughs> what? Yup. 
Three. Well, it's a good thing I'm not raging. <laughs> that doesn't make it worse, does it? It's clumsy. Oh, you're clumsy. It does make it worse. Well, you're right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. It's a good thing you're not raging. I kind of want to use filling points, but I rolled better. High. It's not, not a one. Not. It's not a one. That's a 31, which I'm pretty sure that does not uh, I thought that you were not trained in acrobatics no. uh, The sheer weight of this thing, as I it launches right. itself down towards Marshall, the raw bulk sends tremors to the sand, knocking Marshall prone. Hmm. Um, Rez. Oh, it just knocks him prone? Okay. Yeah, you're just prone. Okay. How much you want to bet it has AOO? <laughs> Stand up and find out. Um, <laughs> looking at this dune shaker, you have seen something kind of like this. And lived? Well, uh, they're not normally this big. <laughs> this, is like, <laughs> this is an actual freak of nature. I mean, you're a desert rat. These things live from live around here. They're creatures called solifugates. And uh, they're more akin to ants than spiders or crabs, regardless of what they look like. Uh, it is a horrifying, I guess it is an arachnid, so it's kind of spidery. It's like a spider ant, I suppose. Uh, they, they live in massive colonies. Don't usually get this freaking big, uh, but they do usually grow to be like uh, the size of a large dog. They usually get pretty, like it's a definitely terrifying to find something that large, but this is absolutely beyond any solificate you have ever heard of in your life. You know that the creatures uh, manage to function their colony because they all actually share an incredibly strong a telepathic network. And many a wizard has attempted to cast any kind of mental effect on them, mm. only to be very rebuffed by the full might of the hive. You also know they're super poisonous. <laughs> This all falls in line with what I was thinking. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you that you didn't just see it, dude. Yeah, it's big and it is just It's information I wanted. I'm going to move 40 feet to the north. And while you're moving, Dan, Ben at 360, Gen Con points to Marshall. Survive, Thank dwarf. Thank you. I'm just a little bit off screen. I'm thinking the same tactics as the giant centipede. I'm going to go this way. Resume's going to go that way. We're all going to live. Inspired. So as you as you go to move here, you yep. saw it clearly reach Marshall from 20 feet yes. away. It could definitely reach you with its legs from right there. Yes. Okay. I don't want to be near it. But it does not. It does. It seems to be pretty focused on the front of the party here and does not make any moves towards you as you run away. My idea is I'd rather get hit once and get hit a lot. <laughs> That's fair. So yeah, I move this way and then just trumpet as loudly as I can. Good job, Marshall. That's got 30 foot range or 60. 60. Oh, 60. Okay, so yeah. everyone's got Inspire Courage. Inspire Marshall. Who courage. Is... Oh, <laughs> this is the fast lad. Well, I didn't think it would move that fast, but, well, got no really much of a choice except standing up. Questionable AOO. Nope. Okay, no AOO. Well, That's an, good news. It is an unintelligent beast. What if it only had AOO on its bite and you're just close? Yeah. <laughs> Fight only? No. Again, I thought you were my friend. Anyway. No, it is an unintelligent beast that does not have any kind of AOL. Time for Mega Marshall. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You get to do full size. Mega Marshall. You get to do absolutely full size here. You are. And we get to see his artwork even better. Oh, yeah. We get to see oh, yeah. Cool that's new martial awesome. art. Big scale. And uh, he's going to baseball swing that thing in the face. Give me a smack. Are you kidding me? I rolled a one. Oh, well. Oh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use that hero point. That's that's money. <laughs> that's, that's what good. they're for. That's good yep. spending. All right, come on. Come on. All the like dreams the right dice. It is not a one, but I don't think it'll hit for a 32. Uh, 32, uh, as you swing your axe at this, is going to hit, and you'll see Marshall blood flying from his body that's mostly his in a not I guess not terribly shocking turn of events yeah. but huge grin on his face wind up a big old two-hander for old slappy swing it and it will physically bounce off of the solificate's body it's oh. chitinous hide so absurdly hard that this first swing doesn't even leave a dent well it's a uh, pretty it's pretty uh tough on the outside guys this thing's chitin is odd looking it's not 
glassy and shiny. It doesn't look much like a crab. In, in fact, it's it looks it looks weirdly soft and almost porous. It's pockmarked with pockmarked with thousands of millions of small little divots, almost looking like the rind of an orange around all, all of the outside of its body. Interesting. But surprisingly resilient, it seems, Rasheen. Hmm. Uh, well, the first thing, she's going to drink this potion that uh, Resme gave her. And Rez is going to get a hero point. From Ghost of Bazan for providing knowledge about the AOO. Yeah. <laughs> risking your face. For the party. Yeah, for the party. That, uh, uh, you, what is it? you swell up like Mr. Hulk, and uh, you feel way stronger and meatier. Uh, that is a... What did you uh, give me? <laughs> that, that, that is the... I thought it was a mist form elixir. No, that is a juggernaut. Uh, so that's going to be plus 30 uh, temp hit points. Oh, wow. And uh, you get, uh, if you succeed in a fortitude check, uh, you get a critical success. That's legit. You, you get baby martial powers. I get baby martial powers. Uh, does it yep. give me a bonus to the save too? Uh, yeah, plus two. Plus two? Yeah. All right, and... It's, it's plus three, actually. Oh, it is plus three, you're it right. It is an item bonus, but it's plus three. Oh my God. You also have a minus two to your will saves and your perception. Well, minus I wasn't... two or minus one? Minus two. Minus two. Uh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, but and, I wasn't worried uh, about that one so much. And you, uh, it's kind of like a mini rage as you kind of lose focus a bit. Again, maybe Marshall. Powell. My my <laughs> my dials don't account for this. My, <laughs> your weakness. My dials don't go that low. <laughs> two, three, four, minus two. <laughs> Juggernaut. Like These are item bonuses. So they're probably I, stacked on top of I don't have a wheel out. for the item bonuses. I don't have an item bonus wheel. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, what is this? All right. Leave it to your ah. <laughs> Like, smash the bottle against her. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spirit. That's a good drink. <laughs> you better be careful. Um, and that's going to be, uh, I'm just going to intimidate this beast. There you go. I have intimidating glare. Yeah, well, it's uh, not super. And in fact, I have scare to death. I will scare to death it. I just picked it up. Did you learn? I just um, picked it that up. That has the incapacitation card, I believe. Oh, uh, it's got the death take, which actually gives it incapacitate, right? It's, no. so it's gonna be. I'm pretty sure They're Raw separate. has the incapacitation trait. Hold on. I, Scared to death might have incapacitation. I'm confident death. has the incapacitation. G trait. Give, me, give me, give me like two effect. seconds. Uh, well, if it has the incapacitation trait, I don't want to use it because oh. I like to like to get like a frightened effect off on it. Scared to death is just you know if it dies, that's just hilarious. But scare to death is death, emotion, fear, general incap incapacitation. Incapacitation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Incapacitation. So now I'll just demoralize it. Okay. Regular demoralize. Then roll me your intimidation check, good sir. I'm Glare assuming, at it very angrily. I'm assuming physically menacing is totally good with it because I'm I don't think shaking you, a sword at it. Can you really physically menace this massive beast that is currently savaging an almost as large beast? I mean, the that's entirely up to you. The act you while it was of you physically menacing something doesn't mean it has to be yeah, menaced. Yeah, I know. You're like, you. You, are you are absolutely physically threatening it right now with a sword. I'll give it to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Take your plus two. Controlled violence. It doesn't have to be scared of you. Uncontrolled violence. Um, although I'm not going to be an idiot. I'm going to cast, uh, do a quickened heroism on myself first for action two, and then I'm going to demoralize it. Okay. Because, you know, getting a bonus is nice. Okay. Bonuses are nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's only a five on the die. I can't have that. Give me a hero <laughs> point. There you go. That transaction. Hero point. Thank you, Ghost of Azan. Let's try this one. That's... All right. So that's going to be a 37. It does not seem to be afraid of the tiny woman that it could easily fit in its mouth. Okay. Along with three more of her. <laughs> okay. Well, that's my three actions. You're not going to like she, it on the way down. She drank the juggernaut potion and just went nuts. <laughs> we didn't do anything to she... She screamed, screamed at it. <laughs> I've got a new ability that I'm going to use. Is it but... scared to death? Because it seems like no. everyone has scared to death now. I'm only trained in Intimidate, I think. Oh, I was about to say, I think it's only just us. You're um, just regular spooky. You're not intimidatingly only... spooky. I'm the kind of scary that you should be afraid of, not the Bravado yelling in your face. Uh, yeah, because like we absolutely have no, no threat to back up our intimidation. So <laughs> a question orientated around the arena. Can we like influence the crowd or any other special things? Well, as you stand here uh, in the back of the group, not as immediately afraid of everybody else, or as, every, as immediately afraid as everybody else, you are a little more focused here. You can feel this almost raw energy, this like imparted adrenaline 
from the cheering audience here. You could absolutely, like this is, it is a very real thing. The roar of thousands of people cheering for, well, something here to die. They're not very specific as the what. You can absolutely take an action to pander to the crowd. Can I take two of them? Or I guess, can I take three of them actually? Do you want to pander three no. times? Curiosity, can I do it three times? I mean, you can. Perfect, I'm gonna use perfect distraction, which lets me cast the spell mislead, which lets me dictate what my copy does. And it's gonna spend all three of its actions every turn pandering to the crowd. What skill are you using to pander? Because I'll let you pick and if that doesn't make sense to me, I'll give you some options. I guess diplomacy, where you're just like boasting. That would be performance if we were gonna like. Performance, gotcha. Try to entertain it from this distance. Diplomacy kind of requires like your words. Which um, here. You are gladiators in arena. You could use acrobatics. You are like, cause this is more of visual displays. They're not, no one's they gonna can't hear, hear you. what you say. Yeah, yeah, well, like, yeah acrobatics works. You um, summon, you use perfect distraction, your, your clone just starts doing backflips. Yeah. <laughs> backflips. Just hyping up the crowd. <laughs> and the rest of you see me just start doing backflips and stuff because as part of that, I get to sneak. It's mislead, cast as one action, and I get to sneak. All right, so that's the first action, and your second uh, is it is definitely pandering, so give me your acrobatics check. I'm not pandering. The clone's pandering. No, you have to roll You're for the clone, dude. The clone. Yeah. Give me your acrobatics check. That's a 19. Um... 46. 46 will critically succeed. You, as you kind of feel this energy, you have two options. You can be selfish with it and give yourself a big bonus, or you can hype up your boys <coughs> and give the whole team a smaller bonus. I'll be selfish because me landing a sneak attack on this benefits everyone. You get plus three status to attack, damage, saves, and all skill checks. Wow. Noise. Wow. So then I'll, as part of all that, I get to sneak. So that is a 39. 39 will fail. Which is a success. Which is a success. <laughs> because stealth is broken in the second edition because they made that feat, which I'm never allowing in a game again. <laughs> but <laughs> continue. So that'll move me 25 or 30 feet up to it because I have fleet. And then I will, uh, I guess there's fine for what I'm planning. I'm going to lash out at it. Poke it. I'm Flat footage, you got okay. plus three status bonus. Do you have any status bonuses? Other dead. Plus one. You got plus one. So yeah, you don't get inspired courage because that doesn't stack. So you got a plus three on your tail. So this is a plus 32. I love it. I'm going to re-roll my <laughs> seven because I really want to hit this thing. Do it. Give me both. I'll take an 11. So you have no choice. Yeah. yeah. 43. 43 will hit. Fantastic. It's now flat-footed to everyone. And what do I want to... It's that just going to take 2d6 more damage. With everyone's yeah. it's just <laughs> that does. going to take 2d6 more sneak attack. Then you have dice? Yep. No. Oh. Oh. No, it's exactly oh, the Oh, 2d6 dice. more is the good thing. I see. Yeah. Do you have, you have the combo? Mm -hmm. Ooh. I got that at level 15. Oh, nice. I see a lot of That's ones. really bad rolls. I do see a lot of ones in that tray. Six of my nine dice, or six of my eight. That's unfortunate. Five. I mean, the point is it's now flat-footed. It this is flat-footed. This was a one, so five, 20. This is looking like some Warhammer 15, rolls over here. I know, right? 22, uh, 33 on that. 33? And it's flat-footed. And uh, so I'm gonna sneak again, because that'll be three perfect actions. Perfect distraction, move hit. Yep. Resume. No. Move as part of perfect distraction. You move as part of it? Yep. It's one action for three actions. It sneaks? Yep. Is that core rule? Uh, right let me take a look. What? I don't normally... 
Say Perfect no, distraction. there's no way it works. Core like that. rule book. Like, there's no way it casts a two action spell and also freaking You use strikes. clever tactics to the, to mislead your foes as you sneak away. You sneak while leaving a decoy behind. The decoy acts as the spell mislead, though you aren't invisible, just undetected. Wow. You can only- It is one action, cast the six level spell and also move. So what it is, it's basically like this, hey GM. And then you move your, t you, move your <laughs> but you have an action left. It is also a focus spell effectively because I have to spend 10 minutes to prepare another decoy. Oh, you so. are literally throwing this the log. It's thing. a log He's a ninja. rolled up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I made this joke earlier. You weren't paying attention. I didn't realize it was the log thing. Yep. I yeah. literally. No, hold on. There's no, a me I have there. To look again. It can't be. It is. Tushik is, is now a ninja. It's CRB and it's legendary deception. It's not even sneak. Oh, yeah. It's not even stealth. It's deception. Yeah. Yep. That's Oof. amazing. Yep, Wow. It it's, gets even better. At level 20, the there's thing. a level 20 capstone of this that's just as a reaction, use it, the clone eats the hit. It's the freaking log thing. Holy crap. And we just, Vilxel! Trishik shouldn't have less than three hero points in a given time. They just reward him for you this. I know. They, they just you reward have one him action for this. Yeah, you can hide again. So I'm going to sneak again and uh, go behind it. <laughs> that's the plan. Just flanking is a good idea. I can't believe it's the log thing. So the what? The log it's a thing. Forty-five. Forty-five. The, a ninja gets hit, they die, and then it poofs into a, a log. Yeah, there's just a log, and they like drop out of the air. Like yeah. I was up here the whole time, and yeah. it's just a log with a robe on it. So yeah. I am now standing directly behind it. All right, resume. Uh, resume will um. Yeah, I'm gonna be go any farther. I got just it. two over. So Resume right will chug it. her own uh, potion down, which is a Drake Heart mutagen. Okay. The big boy one. Well, you've got Jeez, the, the big Chad one now. Um, and uh, her hands will uh, go up in the air, and she's going to be way more uh, dramatic than usual. Um, and light will cast up and surround everyone as she casts out Allegro, and uh, everyone gets haste. Ooh. It does also take three more damage because I did not factor that in with my uh, status bonus. Fair. Oh. Fair enough. Uh, wait, because I just hasted myself, which means I now oh, you have, have a strider strike. Yep. Uh, I'm going to move in the other direction because <laughs> Raz's plan is great. Split up as much as we can. Can you move Trishik's token to where he is, please? Um, that's his that's double the, oh, that's, that's the, the double ganger. Ganger. I can't actually see his token behind the giant panel of cardboard. <laughs> That is the the token that we're using for this. Here we'll go turn as, that sideways. As long as I spend an action to maintain it, it will continue to be there. So effectively, it gives me a free action on my first turn, and then concentrate every turn after. So, so this thing it springs into the bottom and top, so it bounces up and down and doing acrobatic flips. I can dictate loving. different effects every turn. I can tell it to do different things. Oh yeah, access mislead. mislead, so he, has, he can. Yes, strings it. going back to it that he <laughs> can. I'm a puppet master ninja. <laughs> <laughs> This thing, this, uh, the Dune Shaker here, uh, is now very surprised by the fact that not only are you not dead, uh, you're very large, and it's being stabbed in the side, apparently, and it has no idea what's happening. And since it has no idea what's happening, it's just gonna continue, you know, trying to eat the guy in front of him, because you know, that makes sense to him, and it just, frankly is dumbfounded that you aren't dead yet. Now there's more meat, it got bigger. You were, now it's gotta open its four mandibles, like almost cross diagonally to try to clamp down around Marshall here and try to pull this massive man into its mouth. This pillar of dwarf. I would love to use a villain point, but I have to stop rolling good first. Uh, 52. For an attack? Yep. That is a, That's a well, very good Fortification yeah. <laughs> I changed dice, even. It's, it's like a 20% chance. It's not like you put a rune in your immunity No, I crits. just really low. Uh, yeah, he's like, he, he, I think he's made one the entire, ever since we gave it to him. He's only rolled like six. Well, also he hasn't rolled above like a six dies. all session. You gotta believe in yourself. No, I rolled a nat 20 on my initiative. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, you are going to take 102 points of piercing damage. Oh my God. Oh my God. Marshall is very, very bloody. And it's just going to continue like biting down as you see this thing somehow. Th this would be surprising. You see Marshall usually get beat up a bit and pretty bloodied, but you've never seen something really truly overpower him. 
before the Dune Shaker here seems to be doing. Second attack at a minus five. I am immune to use a villain point. Yes, it's below ten. I can use one. <laughs> See, he set a system of laws and rules in place. What? You said it's below ten. No, he doesn't. I'm not gonna use it on a fourteen. <laughs> you should. I'm not gonna. <laughs> use a villain he's not point. Dirt. As it tries really hard to, uh, not so much to pull, it refocuses effort from trying to like put Marshall in its mouth, but just almost to crush him with these mandibles, pl mandibles planting its forelegs in the ground, almost stabilizing itself as it really chomps down. Um, so that's gonna be six lower, so it will be a 46. There's one lower on the die. And oh, I can't five. use the rune again, can I? Yeah, you totally yeah, can. Yeah, 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 the Draugr die. Don't ever take Derp's dice. That's not Malachite. I, I, Don't ever take Derp's dice. Too lower than what I wanted. Almost. But not quite. I'm pretty sure that's going to take me down. Um, It's going to be it's a much lower roll, but there's big numbers. See? Wow, that's the Draugr. Holy crap. That's like 68 points of piercing and damage. And Marshall goes down. Woo. As Marshall finally goes down after like 12 concerted seconds of effort from this thing, it flicks uh, its body up in the air, which again, this isn't actually the, the, the thing that we have on the token because they don't make gargantuan tokens, they're too big. It is a huge thorax, almost like a beetle, that's ridged with jagged spiky growths down several serrated rows on its back. It raises this up in the ground, and drops Marshall as he kind of goes limp and collapses, almost spitting him down in the sand, and shoves its face in the ground and disappears into the dirt. Attack of opportunity. Talisman. The I talisman. have one use, and <gasps> this is the time to use it. Knock. And Trishik takes his swing. Oh boy. Another seven, which I will reroll. It's flat footed. It is flat footed, and I still have my plus three. You do still have your plus three. So, how would you like a 47? That'll hit. This is real upset about Trishik, but he doesn't know what Trishik is and whether he really exists. <laughs> yeah. I twisted my ankle again. So that is 44. Hit 36, then 44. Mm -hmm. That's easy to add And because mentally. I hit it again, I think I'm going to change its debilitations to Enfeebled 1 and Flat-Footed. Okay. And then uh, as you take it, it kind of wavers a bit. As you see, as all of you kind of see Trishik appear behind it, its claw ripping up through its thorax as it dives out of sight beneath the dirt. The, chow, the, the crowd cheering uproariously as Marshall drops, which would shrink it back on the size, I believe, because his rage yep. ends. But so he's not dead. He's not can't, dead. Can't be angry when I'm unconscious. He's dying, which is a different thing. You also Would didn't you go like down. to go down next to me? Preferably, yes. <laughs> he collapses Just... back towards Rasheen as the creature drops his shrunken body. Maybe that's he lost grip as Marshall. Hey, that's what kept you alive. You shrunk down and it lost grip on you. It's just like, what the heck? And then just dove. And for our viewers out there, just keep in mind, Marshall, when raging, has 335 HP. Angry. So imagine the amount of damage. So let's forget angry. Mm. Well, we watched it hit you for 102, which yes, Raz is. is not about. You don't, <laughs> want, you don't want to hit for 102? No. That was a pretty girthy roll. Is it my turn? I rolled over 30 on 4d10. That was wow. a very bad roll. Uh, your turn, Rest. Um, trace the signal on my armor. The two massive wings of pages just appear into sight, and Raz just shoots up in the air. <laughs> what? <laughs> Please no. Please no. <laughs> How high up are you going? Um, What's your speed? What is the speed? And on up at more than a 45 degree angle is difficult terrain. Uh, Kidoki, we're gonna go. At a not 45 degree, um, a 45 degree angle up, then I guess we'll move forward. As long as I'm not on the ground, and I'm assuming it has tremor sense, Raz is just assuming a lot of things about this thing. Um, Don't you also have to make an accurate badass? Well, or you made a bunch of hyper that was just a super Did any of it get you whether it has tremor sense? <laughs> well, it's an insect that lives in uh, an underground colony. So, so I'm going to go with uh, yes. You can assume from there, but the yeah. hypercognition did not tell him no. Okay. Yeah, it's, 25 feet, so yeah, just up as far as that will get me. Is that one action to activate? Um, it's two I think it's two to activate actions. And one so you can go, yeah, 25. Or actually, haste move. 
That's true. So you can do it twice. You can be 50 feet. I'm, I'm just, gonna say 30 because I don't want to do math. I'm just gonna go up yep. to 15. Then I'm gonna just do one action. Okay, just fly yep. up 15 feet. Yeah. Wait. Question: If you're doing a 45, isn't that a one to one? So every forward is also an up. It's right. not. No, that's no, not, not how works. geometry no. works. No. Okay. It's like moving diagonally. It's the same as moving diagonally. Like every other is 10, but up. I don't want to do me... triangles. Yeah, Pythagoras hates fun and flying. <laughs> it's so, just the quick thing that popped into my head is, isn't the it one to one, but it's square not. Of two me is your friend. Up no. Right, I'm going to flip my hat off. Raz is going to do a little flip, and we're going to do performances up here to hype up the crowd. So as you fly up and you begin to perform to the crowd here, you can hear the roaring cheer, but you haven't done anything but run away yeah the crowd does not cheer for you I'm trying to hype them up not myself but you uh your performance is uh it does not rile the crowd much you do not really get the energy chic opened with it which let's go is one of the uh form factors for a performance but you need to please them before you can partake of you're right energy. we did just watch marshall die it is all his fault <laughs> marshall love you too buddy. is here Rasheen. Well, that was a fine opener. Come on, Marshall, back up, back up. Krasak. <laughs> <laughs> a leg shoots up from underneath the sand as you go to ta attack. Its attack of opportunity only works when it's burrowed. I knew it had a He's conditional AOO. He's not attacking. AOO. He's I'm not attacking, but I'm healing with it, provokes. I'm kidding. It doesn't do anything. You can oh, okay. oh <laughs> God. I was so sure this thing had a conditional <laughs> AOO. My... My like, GM wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> Only when it's funny. <laughs> I was so positive it had that. Not necessarily for that trigger, but. Oh, oh okay. All right, all right. That's, uh, that's 40 that's plus a lot. 64. Uh, 104 health back. I will take it. It undid the one exactly crit. Exactly one crit. <laughs> one crit up. But Marsh, um, you said I almost called him Marshmallow. Oh, okay. Marshall is conscious. <laughs> that is his new name. He, he looks like a marshmallow to this what? thing. That's a dude thought. <laughs> that is your gladiator name. One plus one actions left. So, you can take this um, <laughs> wounded one. Hmm. Wounded two, because crit? No, that's not how it works. No, it's, no, it's dying two. Yeah. It's been so long since I was down, I forgot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I can fix that real quick. <laughs> okay. Listen to this man. Listen to him. One you're not the man with a real axe on the table. <laughs> and you're on the same side of the table as him, too. Unwise. Uh, let's see Unwise. here. Roshin's going to stride uh, to the other side of Marshall. Um, and... Uh, forward. So, yeah, forward in front of Marshall. Um, and uh, she's going to uh, beat the... Uh, beat her sword on the ground, uh, <laughs> right kind here. of calling up, saying, come on up and fight. And, uh, at the, but pandering to the crowd while she does it to call the, call the enemy out. You as well have done nothing worthy of the crowd's admiration. So as you attempt to pander. I can't like call him up and try to like, hey, I'm going to get him kind of thing. That's, that's, that's like funny perhaps, but you do not partake of the <laughs> crowd's right, enemy here. <laughs> And as you wake up, Marshall, you suddenly realize that you eat bugs like this for breakfast. You feel like you can take out a bite out of this one as well. Dark card 995 with a hero point for you. Very well said, Dark card. Trishik. So, uh, I'm going to pander to the crowd again with uh, both me and my duplicate taking a bow before I disappear. And I'm going to sneak. The crowd didn't even see him. No, he appears. He appears when he attacks. He's yeah, not every invisible. time I attack, everyone can see me. You yeah. can a shower of blood. You can absolutely in. pander because you just you just slashed at it. So you <clears> just you just got a good hit in. You can pander. Give me an acrobatics. It's another back foot. <laughs> uh, he's your weird log. Thirty-one. Keep doing flips. Uh, thirty-one is going to fail. Perhaps this sudden brief appearance. The crowd's not really sure what's happening. They don't know for you sure. You do I was still the one have the plus three for now. Okay. And then I will sneak off uh, towards the southern pillar. Because uh, tremor okay. sense and not being on the ground are good things. And uh, as you move over there, that's a sneaking back 47, into sorry. the magical shadows once again, you do feel this energy, this adrenaline kind of fade. The, uh, the crowd bonus is over for you. Resume. Uh, Resme will, uh, again, swirl her arms around and say, Ravellum Totalis! 
and you will all get a vision uh, in your heads of exactly uh, what the worm is going to do. Uh, how it's- You need to target it. You can't see it right now. That's something you can throw on it when you can see it. And then when it burrows, you would be able to keep track. Oh, of it. just knowing. Oh, that's right. You don't know where it is. That's right. I don't know where yeah. it is. How far away was that pillar from me? 20 feet. I had three actions. You had one plus one left. Yeah, you can definitely go up the pillar too. Yeah, so I'll go to the top of the pillar. Oh, you know, box. Uh, in but when it comes case, back up, you can throw that on it, and then you'll all know where it goes. She's going to call out Donum Vite <laughs> and pump Marshall up some more because he's going to need it. Take some help, buddy. You move 30 feet, so you should be about exactly 30 feet away, so that's good. Oh, I can always reach. You can ready that's action, true. true attack. It's a one action spell. You could ready action, true strike. Huh. Is that, that for an AOO, I guess? Because like, you can't mm. also ready the attack. Oh, yeah, not, not true, true strike, but attack. true attack. That's one action. I think. Oh, that's what I didn't know. That was a thing. Yeah, that's what she's casting. What? Right? She's casting heal. Oh, no, before that. that oh, doesn't it's matter. just I'm one thinking, action. I'm, just thinking, I'm thinking something else. Oh, is what? it the tracker thing, one yeah. action? Yeah. Then yeah. you can ready that. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, if that's a one action spell, you can you can don't beat to, you can't don't beat to end ready it, but you could spend two actions to ready that when he appears, you'll it, throw that on him. Is it one action? Yes, it's only one action. Wow, all right. It's upgraded true strike. Yeah, it's better true strike, I think is what it is. Oh, yeah, but you can't do that and heal, because that'd be four actions. I have haste. Haste that's does not a fourth action. Or haste is strike or strike. Um, well, I've already rolled the heal, so it's okay. kind of disingenuous. Probably, yeah. probably better anyway. I would appreciate it, personally. <laughs> Marshall would <laughs> like to be healed. Yes. Marshall, I just want to be able to hit it once, just to teach it a lesson. You did hit it. No, I didn't. He hit at it. You, you, you hit it, it just didn't go through. Uh, that's going to be uh, 107 points of health. Another crit gone. Ooh, I will take We're doing it. Just erase the crits. <laughs> Remove the damage from Marshall's page, please. Um... And then that would leave you with one plus one actions left if you wanted to. Uh, I am going to... Probably just plus one action because you can reach. Oh, yeah, probably plus I, one. Yeah, I had to reach. Um, Resme's going to move a little bit more. Not knowing where this thing is going to be, it's really not useful, but she's going to do it anyway. And Marshall awake on the ground feeling a surge of healing energy from him. Oh. oh. Thanks, guys. Oh, Appreciate it. That did a number on you. Does a little, for entertainment purposes, rocks himself up and, you know, does a little flip jump to get himself back up. Because, you know. I hear big rain, so if the power goes out, I'm sorry. Florida power. So he goes. gets up. Question, am I still hasted even though I went down? Yes. Yeah. Just not stop sure. affecting you just because you went unconscious. Just like that. Well, something tells me I might have to change strategies here. Rectangle! Bonk. Bonk. And, because I have second win, Mega Marshall! <laughs> <laughs> and he just gets huge again! He learned he his lesson! He's right back up! I, get I had a good out. teacher! Yeah, and the Gugs, Gugs taught him a very valuable lesson. Alright, so they... Now, you, have the, you have your plus one left, so if you want to move, you can. Um... Hmm... I guess the only logical thing I could do is... Well... Well, I guess I'll go over here just in case. But why are you moving away from me? Why are you moving oh, away there, from me? There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Stomping off toward like vaguely the same direction as Resme. Well, the, I we might need to pan ready. the camera out a little bit for this particular battle here. Well, <laughs> only because my, my thought process is she's over there. I'm going to be over here. We're going to... I, I mean, we're still roughly within range of each other. And if it wasn't obvious, it has a lot of reach. That is true. That also so, gives it enough room to appear between you. It, it is a beast. It might do that. Blanking. As uh, Trishik is sneaking across the sands here, a giant man is stomping down, and uh, Resme is sprinting down to south. The is kind of standing and rising in the air. Uh, the bug that almost certainly has treasures, uh, tremor sense is going to shoot out of the ground, erupting in another blast of this time sand mixed with chunks of hard packed dirt that are almost like stone uh southeast of resume going for the tiny edible food feet attack of opportunity yes 15 foot reach he is going to be in range actually so you're going to put him east of resume for convenience sake then 37 37 to as you flat footed as it's flat footed as you swing down uh, with the massive surge of earth erupting out around it, uh, your hammer doesn't really get a clear arc and just Darn. gets a glancing blow here. 
Oh, I tried. Shoots up out of the ground, maw already widespread, almost coming up like an antlion beneath Resme here for a big dodge. Uh, uh, it's going to be a nimble dodge. Dodge. Try not to crit me, please. Not critting is good. Him. That's going to be a 51. Uh, that is just a crit. Can't be more than that. Just a crit. Can't be more than super crit. Yeah, it doesn't get. It doesn't go higher than that one. Thankfully. I got um, some temp hit points. It's gonna be. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> These things attacks are so dice heavy. Uh, it's gonna be thirty-one points of piercing damage. It is the just a lotto ticket when it hits you. Wow, okay. That, that was like way less than <laughs> yeah. I thought it was. 31 be. points of piercing damage. All right, that was... So that's don't hit her. I'm yeah. tempted. I'm not tempted. Oh, wait, no, that's a crit. Sorry, 62 points that's of piercing fine. damage. But yeah, still like the that's roll. That's a lot nicer lower. to you than it was. That's <laughs> almost half of the 100-something it hit him for, yeah. Uh, 62 points of piercing damage. As it comes out, these uh, mandibles slashing across you, and it takes its per uh, purchase again. Legs kind of spread across the sand. Uh, and again, as it emerges back up, it seems like it's caught off guard by the crowd and just the noise up here. And again, kind of shuffles and skitters a little bit back rather than committing for a second, turning up and roaring out to the crowd angrily. Um, this thing absolutely can pander. Uh, <laughs> it's going to get angrier. <laughs> Oh my god. I love Fastfinder. It's going to get angrier still at its confinement here and uh, what is happening and as the crowd cheers again to see this thing's explosive return before it turns back uh, to face Resme. Uh, almost not sure where to put its focus. It's got Marshall Giant kind of stomping its direction already. It assumes you also have Treasure Tremor Sense. Yeah. <laughs> Turned up toward the crowd and just sort of slapping down at Resme with these massive forelimbs. Beep. Uh, agile. The 40 foot tall thing is agile. The claws are. Yeah. <laughs> they're only 10 feet long. Is it? <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're 20, actually. It's 20 foot reach. Okay. Uh, sorry. Oh, only yeah. 10 feet on the mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only a 20 foot long guillotine. As it slims, the, pretty much, as it slams down the first of these narrowly missing resume and kind of bashing in the sand, it readjusts and just slices it horizontally here. I'm going to use a villain point. How could you? Yeah, some <laughs> Dark Souls boss moves, man. <laughs> it's just. You dodged too early, you <laughs> fool. You have played exactly into my hand. Take the first crit. Hope the second one doesn't crit you. Uh, 52 after the minus one. Jeez, dude. That will totally hit. Crit. It's fine. It's, it's gonna fine. be fine. That's on the second attack. It's fine. It's fine. See, this is exactly why. You're over there being all cavalier, and I'm like... It... Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Fly. Fly yeah, you fool. That'd be good. <laughs> Fly, you fool. Uh, let's get for... I'm tempted to use my wings. <laughs> 68 points of slashing damage okay. as this first one connects. And then the forelimb from the other side comes down for its I, third that's action. That's its fourth? Third action. Did you not see it blender Marshall? Like <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I just can't count, apparently. No, it's yeah. very unclear what costs this creature an action. That mm -hmm. is definitely not just you. All right, Agile. So yeah, I, I was very confused for a while. Minus eight this time. Oh, this might miss. Maybe. Okay. Minus. He says on a 19. <laughs> <laughs> 38! That was a mess. 38 misses your regular AC. She has Drake Heart. No, I have Drake Heart. 38 Legion, misses your Drake Heart at AC. Actually, yeah. isn't your Drake Heart at 38? Because the, the stats you just sat me had you at 38. Yeah. Oh, 38. I think that's it's, it's me. Is it me or beat? It's me. We'll hits. do it. And your nimble dodge is gone. Oh, yeah, oh I, I, I always is, forget is if Drake it's me or beat. Just a plus one? No, no Drake Heart's plus two. Bigger Drake Heart. Drake Heart's complicated. Yeah, but it's just a normal hit. Okay, not a crit. It almost missed. We got the exact lethal one there. Nine on the die on the third attack. Oh, we almost missed a swing. Uh, this claw is going to come in for 36 points of slashing damage. And as the two blows from these claws sort of set you off balance, a third one just guillotine. Oh, wait, no, we need to use an action for that. Dang it, it can't use the free guillotine. Rez. I'm going to fly. Are you still up? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Are you? Yeah. You're fine, fine is a strong word. Well, fine is a strong word. Conscious. I have 41 points of health left. Conscious. She Dude. could take another one of that last slap. 
Link 1429. The nature of sorcerers is we are alive and we are dead, and this is our two I have states. sightings. Thank you, Link. Second Thanks a lot, Link. villain point back into the stash. Um, oh my god, he's making FF jokes. Link, you'll be happy I hate to you. know. I'm, I'm going to fly 50 feet down. I'm gonna I'm gonna use two actions to go straight towards that thing. Okay, and I imagine I'll put you around Marshall's distance probably. In front of a breast with him, 15 feet up. I don't care to measure it. There's not a ruler tool in our yeah. forge yet. Um, you know what? Is that about what you wanted? Do you want to count it? Do you want to go further than that? That's fine. I'm trying to position a 60 foot cone not to hit Resume. I don't care about Marshall. Well, this thing is oh, the gee, size thanks. of a house, so you can definitely just shoot over Marshall and Resume because it is just so gargantuan. Spirit song. As he uses the trumpet, just blast out a reverberating sound that shakes the souls of everyone who can hear it. But it's a 60 foot cone in front of me. It is a fort save. It's like my one fort save out of everything I have. Uh, Would you believe if I told you fort is not its good save? Actually, no. yes. This thing sounds like reflex. It sounds like reflex to me. It's actually fast as hell. It is actually a reflex king. It's fort's not bad, but it's not Why its do you best. Do this, Link? <laughs> Link 14, 29. Not anymore. You don't villain point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Link. Don't egg him on. No, he can't give it. Thank anymore. you for encouraging him. I appreciate you. He only you. has so many points. Go, Dune Shaker. Um, 53. 53. That is his, his worst save. That's a pretty good Sorry, save. I didn't say it was his worst save. I didn't say it was not his best save. It is still an animal. It is still a save. Um, but it's still a 18th level creature, so. It is. Cool. Mm. Me. Does that have nothing, nothing like critical failure? That's have we not gotten to the point of cool stuff where critical failure still nope, does things? basic saving throw. He uh, is almost too angry to even comprehend or acknowledge what's happening here. It is He's upset. too angry to fail. It's just another loud noise in the cacophony yeah, of noises. Yeah, it's just a, a wash and the yeah. cry of the crowd. Roshin. <sighs> All right. It's very fast. Stupid thing. All right. Huff, 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 huff. Run, run, run. So hasted action. One, two, three, four... I can move a second time to get next to it, next yeah. to Resme. Resme, why are you still on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> what? Go I up or don't move. <laughs> and um, that was a move. Two action. I have two actions yeah, left. Yeah, two left. He has one I plus one. Two action left. In Shafail. Um, and she's going to reach out as energy reaches around. It has a will save to make. Oh, it's not good at that one. It's still a plus 48. No, it's not. The plus, it's sorry, plus 47. 47. Uh, villain point, if you want to be a plus 47, I'll show you a freaking plus 47. Thank you, Link. For <laughs> Why are you like this? Um, Let him fail stuff. I rolled literally the same thing, so nothing happened. Uh, See, I just made him waste a villain point. 37 is going to be the result. 37? 37. Oh, he passes by two points. It's all right, though. Um, so he's going to, uh, visions are going to flood his mind of all of the ancestry solophids from his <laughs> hive that's his, not around his anymore. His queen mom and his, her octogentillion exactly. eggs that are his kin. And that's going to slow him for a round. He's going to be slowed one for a round. That's probably pretty good. B based on the action economy this thing seems to have, that I'd probably say it's like three attacks. three attacks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, um, and that's Rashik. Well, I'm on top of the pillar, and it's right there, so I think you know what I'm about to do. That pillar, so it's gargantuan. It is not in melee range. It's That's a 35-foot pillar. That's why I have a bow. Oh, yeah, you can sound how the pillar and just shoot at it. You can absolutely do that. It can definitely reach you, but it's... Well, the point is, I get to hit it from sneaking. You do get to hit it from So sneaking. it's flat footed. You? To I just want to point out how ridiculous 41. this speed is. You are hidden on top of a 10 foot wide pillar in the middle of an arena. No one can see me. Standing there with your bow out, <laughs> and nobody can see you. Help me understand. He crouched. <laughs> I crouched. He did the thing. 41. Just is it still flat footed from your last attack? It yeah. is flat footed because I'm sneaking. Oh, that's true. Then a 41 will hit. It is now flat-footed. Because you hit it. Because I hit it. And it's taking the additional sneak attack damage. Because every time I hit it once, I have to trigger that. So, 10, 17, 18, 23, 30, 
31, 41. 41? I have a lot of small numbers I have to add up. 121 points on the board, literally all from Trashik. Well, you know, it's also bleeding. It's bleeding. And I'm going to shoot it again. And now it's regular flat-footed, so yeah. now you just get to shoot it normally. I'm going to re-roll that three. See, Trashik could have just came in here and 1v1 this thing. Yeah. No. <laughs> Find you. So I mean, my players players Shake was wise. He brought in Don't. like a whole wagon of meat oh. for it to chew on. <laughs> <laughs> he is one v one. I got He's a twenty nine. So hard right now. Definitely not going to hit. No. Uh, that's actually going to critically fail against this flat footed. Um, and then and you're I'm sustaining your thing. Oh, you're sneaking back down. Yeah, th that thing is irrelevant. The longest served its purpose. The longest yeah. gone. So resume as this thing. So sneak and move five feet on the pillar thirty nine. I should have given you a tempo wide pillar. This is crap. Um, the as this thing erupts out of the ground next to you, Marshall now truly gigantic. The tremulous movement of this thing as it shakes the earth is just vibrations to you. But resume is definitely small enough for it to be earth moving. I need an acrobatics check. Sure. Why it's not a reflex save? I can only assume is a holdover from before the coral book was finalized. But it says acrobatics check, so that's what we're doing because it's hilarious to me. Are we serious? Uh, 20. Uh, you are prone. Okay. But it is your turn. Uh, We're going to have to keep moving it to keep the fight in view. We have a big arena. Do I have to get up to cast? No. Um, you have, if you're a spell as an attack roll, you have a penalty for being prone. But otherwise, there is no downside to just laying on the ground and casting. <laughs> Acrimonia. <laughs> and um, Resme will disappear. And um, a copy of her will appear beside her. He teleported five feet to the right. Um, yeah, and this looks kind of familiar. Yeah, I know. Hers isn't a freaking log. <laughs> <laughs> With strings. <laughs> With really long puppet strings. It's a, like a wind-up toy, and it just dances until it falls over. <laughs> Because he stopped focusing. He's <laughs> <laughs> just around. This is my new favorite feat. That's my new second Very I much hate so. most of your feats, but this is definitely my new favorite. And then, um, Revelarum Ferosa. And uh, now I will use True Target. It's just on the corner doing Fortnite dances. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. So you, you, uh... Oh. All of you would see this creature start to almost emanate a subtle reddish light that sort of moves a little bit delayed behind it. Uh, and it is, you can see it, those of you who are not in the front line here who have any intervening things, like you, Trashik, sneaking on the tower, you can see it through the lip of the pillar as you move. Roshin, as Marshall's giant axe is flailing in front of you, you still see this through the axe as it swings. You have Giga Vision. Hammer. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you have and a strike or stride. Uh, I am going to uh, stride. You can't, you're prone. I can't, I'm prone. Drink um, question. Control. You want to hit it with your free action. Uh, <laughs> crawl is not a stride. No. Um, I am actually going to roll a little bit and stay where the hell I am. <laughs> Just kind of dodge a little bit on the ground. Marshall, now too large to be pronified by this beast. Well... <sighs> I'm going to take a baked potato out of my beard to fire in the battle potato up there because I cool. feel like I need uh, some hit points. If you were in any way invested in the potatoes, I I would make you actually like regrip your weapon, but it's just funny and I don't care to. Because mechanically, you should have to do that and then take a second action to regrip your weapon, but you Who healing cares? for like 15. I don't care. So <laughs> give me a medicine check. 28. 2d8. It's expert now, right? Yes. 2d8 plus 10. Hey, that's 2d8. Please roll plus... exactly 15. Uh, because it'd be 14. 14. It is 14. 14. You like 15? I'll take it. You get 14 likes. points of health back. For hey, that's better than vigorous not, not having them later. And you have two plus one actions left. Yep. I got a lot of dice here. Hold on. All right. So, and I'm still hasted. So yep. I. Uh, two plus one. You know what? I have a slight idea. Well, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to try and spook it to death. Okay. Or it's, it is actually impossible to die because it's incapacitated, but uh, you don't, it's a will save, right? Is it an intimidate check? It's, it's a check. 
it's an intimidate. So it's an intimidate against its will DC. If oh, okay. you critically succeed, it needs to make a, a fortitude, fortitude save, save right. against your intimidate DC or die. Right. So okay, so make me your intimidate. It's incapacitate, so it's going to be one degree of success worse because this thing is a chad. But it's actually That's... not unrealistic for you to critically succeed, so regular succeed. Uh, it's a pretty big number. Uh, math. Hold on. Sorry. 44 on Intimidate. 44 does critically succeed. So because of Incapacitate, it's a regular success. So what happens on a regular success? It's Frightened. Frightened 2? No, it's two. Frightened 2. It's better than uh, 1. Uh, I think it's two because it's just better than. Give me moralize. two seconds and I'll double check. I mean, yeah, the fact that I could kill you was <laughs> I think but... fail is a one, success Look, is a two. The Pretty killing good. never actually. Give ends. me, give me a couple seconds. Okay, if it's it just a two. success, it's frightened two. Yeah, so it's frightened two now, which is still better. That's good. That's it, spectacular. Actually, that's fantastic because that stacks with flat-footed. Yeah, flat-footed yep. circumstance. Yep. And I still have a regular attack and my haste attack action. Yep. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. He grips, twice, he grips the rectangle. The rectangle. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. And, and I, you, thanks to Resume, I got targeting thing, you, yeah, you, you get to roll twice. First attack. Back, which does mean you can't hear a point, but that's okay. Oh, my God. I rolled a 19 on one of them. That's critical. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a 49. No, it's a keen rune. Yeah. It's a keen oh, rune. you're using rectangle. I'm, I'm using work. rectangle. Because I did, can knock it pro. Did he not put... Oh, Keen doesn't work on Bloodhound. Keen doesn't hands. work on Bloodhound. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so 49, flat-footed and frightened too, is still a critical hit. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's going to be knocked prone because of Hammer. And you just flatten this thing, its legs splayed out through the sand as you smash nice. it down into the dirt, and it's prone now. As I'm smacking it down, I'm like... Can you feel the beat now? Rawr. We're hitting it with the player special. One of every debuff. <laughs> you can yes. do the one of Ooh, This is how you gotta uh, fight bosses. I got this a level. pretty good uh, roll on this one. This how you really always had is... to fight bosses. That's fair. Uh, no, never forget the greater bar guest. Yeah. <laughs> we were forged in the greater bar guests. <laughs> One times two. 102. 102. Hit it right lovely. back. Wham! And yeah. Does true strike only work on one attack? One attack. First it's your attack. first attack. Now you're hitting normally at a minus one. Worth it. Oh, and it's it prone. It's prone, feared, and flat footed. Flat footed and prone are the same thing. Okay, but it is whatever. it is prone and, it, and it feared. It is a feared. It, it it is it should be afraid. It's not happy. Because Marshall is not happy with it at all. That is a 17 on the die. Nice. So, it's a so that's uh 42. That hits. That's all that matters. Marshall is I'm taking it back with a vengeance. Not the only one to do damage. Well, he cut up your damage uh, on the first 17. swing. So it was a crit. <laughs> it was a Marshall so crit. So 50. 50 more. Bam. If I land Bam. a crit, you're also one right see after another. Slam, with two slam. incredible slams here, this thing looks debilitated. And although the outside of it, again, it's, it looks like an orange peel. It looks weirdly spongy. Marshall is just battering through this with rectangles, <clears throat> shattering the chitin of this crab apart on the, up on the top of its head where all the eyes sit. And this thing's just kind of writhing in the ground. And uh, it is going to... You're 15 feet in the air, Rez? <clears throat> yes. It is going to open its maws wide, almost to screech and a spray of thick, viscous poison is going to shoot out of its mouth, coating Rasheen, Marshall, and Raz. Does that have provoke? Uh, no, it is just an attack, actually. Okay. Just making sure. But it's not a ranged attack. It doesn't... I think no because of what it does. Uh, make me a fortitude save. There's no way you're not getting hit by this. You said it's an attack. It has the attack trait. It does actually doesn't have like any traits. Oh, okay. So, so remember, I just so it for simplicity, it has like no so traits. So Raz and Rasheen, right? Yes. It's like fortitude. Marvel I am glad trait. I am on the pillar. Just because it's not an attack. <laughs> yeah. But it's a spell though. It has all the spell casting traits, which yeah. make it provoke. Nice. Just literally, the only trait this has is poison. It has no other traits. You roll twenty. I rolled an 18. What's that tell you? functionally a 20. Because I have greater juggling yeah, on you're top fine. of that. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> the DC is not that high. You'll be fine. 39. You got 39? I rolled a, th I rolled a 17 on the die. Holy crap. Rez succeeded. For once in I his life. <laughs> 48. 
You almost just critically succeeded through weight of dice. But I, I do critically succeed. Yeah, you juggernaut. critically. I mean, you could, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> juggernaut. Woo! So Rez is Better the only one that's somehow getting hosed by all but of this. But I'm not critically failing. And you're only taking half, and you're not even regular failing. So you get none of the other terrible stuff it does. It just does some poison damage. <laughs> so I would like a few that bottles of this, please. <laughs> No. No. Um, <laughs> she well, dives I mean, in can, the way with empty vials. You can empty definitely vials. take some bottles, but unless you plan to fire hose it at people, like it's not going to be super effective. It's never poisonous. That's not what it. it it's not like a okay. more acid affliction. It's it's more blinding. Oh. Huh. You take seventeen points of poison damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of us? No, you two no, critically. You succeeded. guys critically you, succeeded. You take nothing. Oh, okay. She just res. He used two actions to do 17 damage to res. It just slides off my armor. He used okay. two actions to do 17 damage to res. Um, and then... It's uh, slowed one. It's slowed one. It's done. Res. It's it's done. Wow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to try. Cast Synthesia on it. Cast what? What if you could taste your eyeballs? <laughs> Everything is purple now. He Good can luck. taste the mallet. <laughs> Let you it probably happen. can't anyway. You're just coming into his mouth <laughs> from the top. <laughs> you don't have bugs work. He's still it frightened one. It has not yep, pandered. One. Yep. It is not pandered. It is... Wow, that's not good. I mean, I rolled good. I'm done um, with maze. I'm done with it. 44. Well, it doesn't critically succeed, so for a round, it... Tastes the hammer. It tastes everything. And you have one plus one. Um... I we're gonna use one action to fly to maintain that, so I don't lose. Oh right, you have to. Do um, that. So the extra action for that, because that's a stride. That's a stride, yeah. It's yeah. a stride in the air. And then you know what? Go team, go! You guys are doing great. Good job. I, if I can't pander to the crowd, I'll pander to them. Inspire yeah. courage. This this Solificate, who has been freaking out because of the roar of the crowd and the noise of this combat, can now physically feel the cheering all over its body. It could taste the cheering. It could see the cheering. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is very upset, Roshin. All right. Um, it did not get up, notably. It's still prone. Still prone. It awesome. Went, you, you hit it like a freaking whoopee cushion full of pudding. You hit it, splatted it on the ground, <laughs> and, <laughs> just, <laughs> and just spewed wow. off its oh goo. Oh, my God. That's twice so in one Colby day has to make a fortitude almost save. made him spit out his drink. Why are we Why killing are Colby? Why are that, please? <laughs> <laughs> It's because we love you, man. I visualize it in my mind. <laughs> you you cartoon character this thing. <laughs> Roshin. To be fair, This Marshall turned so far from, are we going to die in the... Do we need to concede to literally whoopee cushioning? Uh, just kidding. <laughs> All it takes is 120 on the Barbarian. That will turn most fights around. Yeah, yeah it's pretty helpful. I, yeah. I, like I said, all I have to do is hit it. Roshin. Um, Roshin is going to uh, two-hand the sword, uh, raise it up, blast it with uh, energy. It bled um, for three. As it, uh, that's a, um, gonna go to minor curse as I turn on <clears throat> weapon surge. And she's gonna bring this sword down as hard as she can, which is probably not gonna be nearly as impressive as Marshall's hit, but. I, I can all but guarantee it will not. It never is. Uh, damage is damage, dude. Well, not if I roll a four and a six on my. Well, you have it. You, you have it. You have it. You can't, hero point. You can't hero point. Oh, you're right. You can't. That is basically free hero pointing. All right. Which so... is weird that it takes away like an out of game mechanic, but I'm I'm okay with the concept of you can't just reroll something. A million that makes times. sense. Like I I, I, I do a, approve of the concept of the fortune trade. Hmm. So it's a 35 plus everything it has on it. Plus uh, 36. Oh, 36. 36 also, is not gonna connect. It also stops enemies from stacking misfortune effects on you. That's also true. It this works both true. ways. Um, Reroll until you fail. <laughs> <laughs> the worst encounter possible. Literally just two Pugwampies. It just Pugwampies. attacks. No, it just attacks your stack of hero points directly. <laughs> um, so it's going to uh, just clatter off of it, and then she's just gonna scream at it uh, just to try to <laughs> go through a demoralize. Oh wait, I have I already tried to demoralize it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You did in the beginning. You, you, yeah. Did, yeah, in the you beginning. did in the beginning. Yes, because we had a physically menacing conversation with how big it was. Scared to death. Is not That's demoralized. a different thing. Scared to death. Yep. Uh, let's see. Ten on the die. Definitely with prowess. Forty-three. It was a regular success, so it's a failure. So it's failure. Frightened one. So it's still frightened one. Okay. <laughs> I love Roshan's contributions to fights. 
You drink this potion, add it with your curse, go nuts, run over, just kind of and slap it ignored. harmlessly, and, and then ignored. she starts screaming and crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping. I also am here. <laughs> I'm a line fighter. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a support caster, cleverly disguised as a line fighter. <laughs> have, have you ever just been walking outside and you saw a lizard poke its head out and look at you from on top of a roof? <laughs> just, like they just do the little raise up, look at you, pokes come back. out, does the neck thing, and then yep. goes back. Yeah, that's exactly what this is gonna. That's exactly little, what I'm doing to this. Your thing. neck just, thing shoots an arrow though. Yep. <laughs> you ever like had a lizard poke out, look at you, and then you die? <laughs> Strangely, no. So that is a Every 16, day. <laughs> and that is a 13. I'll take the 16. So a 45 to its frightened one flat foot. That will hit. Do the thing. We're getting a real boy ACs now. To be fair, its AC is not a lot higher than some of the party. 11, 15, AC is not really a strong point, honestly. 20, 24, 20 damage. It hurts, man. If it can kill you before you hit it, what's 34. The point? You ever see Marshall get globaled? <laughs> <laughs> so that's 34 damage. 34, all right. And with that, as you see these arrows coming in and hitting in the giant crevasse upon this thing's head and back, that Marshall is left with rectangle. It's uh, flailing starts to dampen a bit. That's why we're gonna shoot it again, because it looks weak. Yeah, it's regular flat-footed now, so you just machine gun it. So, not gonna hit. That's uh, 29 again. Yeah, that's definitely, that doesn't even hit. Are right. you maintaining your thing? No, that's, that's gone. gone. That's oh, gone. Okay. gone. Okay. But you know what I also have? Two more attacks? Yeah. Is it haze? Fishing for 20s, that was a three. Not a 20. That is a 12. Probably not gonna hit with that one either. No. Arrows raining down, Resme on the ground, uh, next to regular Resme was standing there. Uh, regular Resme is not moving at all. Remain prone. <laughs> I am remaining prone, I like it here, this is nice. Um, nice warm. little soft patch of sand. Yeah, he got some nice, the sand is warm with my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what she will do, however, uh, is look up at it, and green light will wash out of her hands and surround this thing and fly at the crevices that Trishik is opening up, disintegrate. Okay, so you do have to hit it for that. Yes, I that do. That is at a minus two being prone. And then it gets a fort save to shrug off the damage. It's it hasn't four? historically been fantastic with fort saves. Also, it's frightening. one. Self true attack, helps. too. Yeah, you still have two attacks. Still have two attacks. I still have two attacks. Like, that's the only but you are reason taking I'm a, You are taking it. a minus two from firing it from the ground, but you do get best of two. I believe. Uh, it's going to be that. Thirty-eight. To a flat footed frightened one. 39 with flat footed what frightened I one. Mm -hmm. This disintegrator really? is going to graze across it and oh, sear one of the legs off of this creature entirely as it vaporizes a section of the connection to its body, which at this point is, is not critical damage given what it has taken so far. Uh, but it's visually impressive as this green laser beam fires out and uh, a leg is severed from this, and the crowd almost is a bit quieter. Like in disbelief that somehow Dune Shaker seems to be losing. Um, and then uh, once again, uh, you all will feel uh, the knowledge of what this thing is about to do go through your heads as she casts True Target one more time but with one, her last action. If this Money. thing makes it through one more round, I'll be impressed. Dude. I don't think it will. Uh, Marshall's right there with exactly. a True Target now. Hmm. Well, hmm. first dance hmm. first. I think Marshall's going to oh, get some uh, angry vengeance. Did she add the plus one to my. Did you? Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah, she did. Okay. I think so. Yeah, she did. Marshall. I forgot it was even up. Marshall is going <laughs> to. Do, oh, it, I did. I inspire courage. Oh, you did inspire last time. Yep. That's true. Marshall, go ahead. Sorry. Marshall is going to do the smart thing. Big red. And maximize. He looks at the crowd. Motions. You know, the tries and. Uh, Flexes this thing is just with kind of flailing on the ground in front of you. Kind of, I, I get. Can I use athletics? To, Absolutely, you can use that. To try and get the crowd. You can turn around and flex on them. Noise. Marshall's giving. Mega Marshall is giving to finish it. 
And as you turn around to the crowd here, they Rolled kind a 19 of on the tune diet. in, and this uproarious cheering breaks out. Keen crits. What happened? Ha what happens? It cannot possibly survive a Marshall Big Red. Big, he gives Big Red a nice little twirl. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. <laughs> Slam it right in half into with flaming beard and all. Big big roar, flame spewing out everywhere. Flexing. Behold our champions of Breach Hill. Nobody can hear you but the party and they barely can get it. But the, the sentiment is all evident. And the crowd, I am so sad. This is the session where Sirenscape, the sound set I made doesn't seem to be working. Mm. There should have mm. been uproarious screaming the entire time. I don't know what I did wrong. Technology. I was so excited for this, but there will be more opportunities. It is there, as your eggs just cleaves through, splitting the two sides of this thing's clawed mouth apart from each other entirely. I really hate Before hanging out with you guys. It. Before I shrink down, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to reach down and grab one of its eyes and rip it out of its socket for Lifter. Hey, the music. The cheering and stuff. And then I just hold it up. And as I shrink down, I'm like, and I, I, I try to see if I can find Lifter in the crowd. Be like, it's for you, buddy. It's for you, buddy. The crowd. Help, please. Ground. That's Beyond. Oh, the there you are. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> you finally feel it. Yes! Hey, boss! How was that? I'm gonna hop down from the pillar and uh, look at you. Nearly half dead. Look at you. Three quarters dead. <laughs> Alive is what we're looking for here. What? Yeah. Why would you stay down here? <laughs> Where do you think we could have gone there, son? Raz had a very good idea. You probably can't should you just, to him. Can't what? you just teleport I... up to the top of one of the pillars? Yeah, you can do that too. That was that would have been an excellent choice. Yeah. No. I I gathered the rest of you guys in my giant arm. Like, come on, guys, let's go celebrate. Come on, let's get the prize. And you can see again the herald up top as they have the, the trumpets playing on either side of him. Seems to be an absolute disbelief as he gestures down to the group of you, calling out to the crowd at large. And you see a uh, figure that was a little bit back from the whip, up on a pretty prominent seat here, stand up in this cleared area at the front on this platform. Uh, she's wearing a steel helm with a very interesting almost facial plate that frames around the entire side of her coming down almost like a pair of blades alongside her jaw and horns up above. She, almost akin to Marshall here, has a massive furred shawl drawn around here, uh, drawn around her with a small attachment of these enormous foot-long brown feathers next to it. Hmm. And the rest of her attire seem to be made from several different suits of armor from different sources patched together. Pauldrons, piece of her breastplate, uh, very, uh, the two different sabatons clearly from different sources, and a pair of ex very long kukris set at her hip. She stands up from the chair, motions to the crowd, walks up to the edge of her platform, and simply hops down the 40 feet to the sand below. Uh, landing perfectly fine, much like Trishik is wont to do, before raising her arms out to the crowd around, almost redoubling the cheering, and then turning to face the group of you. Turning one arm to face your direction, and motioning you to come towards her. We walk over. Sister to a murdered brother. Gotta go pick. Friend to a murdered halfling, and I will have my vengeance in this life for the next. Gonna go pick up my log. <laughs> As you approach her, you can start to hear what she's calling out. And you can hear a bit of an echo behind it as her voice is magically amplifying throughout the stands to be audible, but not so much down here. So until you close a bit of the distance to her, you can't really make out what she is saying. To be sure, newcomers to the sands of the gladiatorial arena, fresh faces of slaying the mighty Dune Shaker. And the crowd roars once more. And uh, she takes a couple of steps closer to you guys. Quite lucky. Never lost. Uproarious applause and cheers for the day's champions! Ha <laughs> ha! 
fortunate as they are to have survived his wrath. I'm healing and myself. skilled as they have clearly displayed. And you can see almost a little of a sneer at the end as she turns to you. And the crowd's still going crazy. She is not seem terribly impressed by the group of you. Almost dismissive a little. But after waiting another few seconds for this roaring, he turns back to the group of you and gestures towards the portcullis at the far end where he'd enter the rattle of, rattles open once more. Oh, good. You hold this arm. Of course, of course. Thank you very kindly. You know, we newcomers, you can never tell how one will burn out. She says nothing. Simply still holding her pose, clearly uh, and turning up. Her face, all smiles for the crowd here. She gestures, waving once more as if she did anything here. Other than just kind of hop down afterwards to congratulate you. It's kind of cool. I'll press the digitation and send up some little fireworks as we leave. (laughs) Uh, The other, uh, from the sides of the arena, smaller gates open, uh, letting a few of the guildsmen come out. Uh, to begin to attempt to hack <clears throat> apart this massive body to remove it so the day's festivities may continue. As the crowd, still standing, ovation, some start to filter towards the entry, uh, towards the openings throughout the stands to head back either to collect bets or... All that money lost. leave themselves on refreshments or explain to their wife where the paycheck went. <laughs> no bet on you. Some people are about to go explain why they suddenly own a castle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To go buy a mansion uh, with the 50 to 1 odds that they just banked on. And the group of you make your way uh, back through into the prep area. Cheers with the crowds falling behind. Being your friends... I never want to do that again. Being your friend is so dangerous. Well, what are the odds they have a second one stashed away Please somewhere? don't talk. You know, I was actually you... wondering, if we, if we lost, how would they get it out of the arena for the next events? As you're, you're coming out of the entrance here, the armsman that you'd seen before, the, the short-haired ginger man. Uh, it's surprisingly difficult, honestly. I'm not really sure how the wranglers control the thing at all. Uh, a lot of sedatives, to my understanding. Huh. A lot of darts. A lot of darts. <laughs> also a couple of wizards. Honestly, that's how they handle me when, you know, I get upset. Holy crap, I can't believe you killed it. That took a little effort, but oh, I figured we would make it through at some point. Oh, we, f- uh, we figured we, we, we'd play it up for the crowd of it, make it look like we were having a hard time of it. Look, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to have to ask you to wait here for a moment. We didn't even have the purse ready. We literally <laughs> just assumed you were all going to die. <laughs> oh, no, no. Hey, if you, have a, if you have a moment, tell Lifter I got his prize for him. Oh, he's still in. He's waiting here. He's looking as well as he can, listening oh, to the bars. Oh, hey, Lifter. I dingle the eye around. You just hear I can't you actually kill the thing! <laughs> As promised, we've we avenged your bodies. And he, uh, he the, the armsman motion to follow back in the prep area where Lifter stand up with several of the other gladiators, none of you recognize all in various states of disbelief and honestly smiles. And the arms master uh, again, uh, if you can just wait here for a moment, I'll I'll go collect the winnings. Right, uh, of course. Uh, of course apologies. Of course. It was inconceivable that Roshi's uh. gonna hold up Marshall's hand. For presser, for thrower, for Johnny John Johnson, <laughs> for Fingers Malloy, for can- the Candy Mountain Band. <laughs> Justice has been done for you all, for you and yours. And lifters beaming ear to ear here. Many of the other gladiators are the equally honestly, like this is 100% playing to your crowd here. Yeah. <laughs> They're cheering as well. It's not nearly as much. It's a half dozen men here. Patting you on the back, gathering yes. around you. You get the, the, the sweaty man friendship uh, huddle here. Careful, my dress is torn. Uh, they're not they care. careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gladiator's guild. Like but, what, careful is not in their language. I have this kind of subsides a bit lifter. Uh, I can't believe you killed the thing. What? I told you to have faith in us. I mean, I, uh, I was rooting for you to be sure, but... Cheering you on and you believe in it's in any way remotely possible. The two different things. Look. You didn't see what that thing did to Presser. I mean, don't get me wrong. It hurt quite a bit the first time. Kyle Cox has said, well, it looks like you did, but you're still alive somehow, so. I have, I, I grab my teammates. 
I'm like, I have wonderful family here. It's hard to I was pretty sounds. sure. We've, it, we've had worse, to be honest with you. You know, typically there's a certain kind of death scream that's usually pretty distinguishable. And I was I always thought that was what I heard coming out of you out there, but you did, seem to be surprisingly fine. Did I mention when he fought the magma dragon it was over a pit of magma? I... I still can't tell if you're pulling my leg. I'm the fact 100% serious. I kept one of its teeth. You want to see it? You want to hear me try to tell a lie? Because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, of the other, one of the other gladiators there who's uh, dressed in almost what looks like a carved, you know, the traditional Spartan. It's got the pecs and the abs <laughs> on the front. It's for yep. show more than it is an actually effective breastplate. Mm -hmm. uh, with what at first looks to be an attachment for a half cape. There's actually a net draped across his back. Hi. Um... Give us a moment, would you? Uh, lifter. And the motions to everybody else. And they sort of form like a separate, distinct huddle nearby, and some muttering goes through. Uh, Guys, Severin flies up above and tries to listen. I mean, it's not hard to pick up on what they're doing. <laughs> we're going to have to fight suit. these guys, guys. You we can, can't do that. You can... <laughs> They'll kill us. <laughs> you can hear some numbers. You can see a couple people reaching back for their purses and oh, handing some bets. things around. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, after about a minute or so, they kind of nod as you see some affirmative grumbles mm -hmm. of agreement, and uh, they turn back around and give it to Lifter. Uh, Lifter's got just a handful of coins. <laughs> Look. A lot of extra little coin pouch and just pass it over to him. Look, he's a uh, he's not wrong. He ain't got a name. He gambled it away. But I want you to have this. Uh, Guild will get your purse, but you earn far more than that. I'm serious. That that thing's killed a lot of people here. You were close with here. Well, That's just you. a handful of just mixed coins of what they happen to have at the time in their various purses. Mm -hmm. He just kind of dumps into your little rat hands. Well, you know Probably about a third this. of it kind of falling on the floor around your little fingers. You know what Can we should do with this? Give it to the family. We should throw a party with it for you. We should ah, celebrate their yeah. memories. Get yeah. the beast! Sit down on the ground. Invite all their families. Throw a big sweaty man party. You know what? <laughs> well, if there's anything that <laughs> Impressor and Thor would have appreciated, it's a drink in their honor. And trust me, I've had plenty. Why don't you take us to the best place you know? A nice tavern would do. After the day, no. of course. Oh, you lads. I don't know what's in those heads of yours. There's something God's blessed to be certain. If you walked away from a fight with Dune Shaker, you got a tooth to show for it. There's a you really killed the thing. There's a lot of magic up here. That's a lot of empty thoughts. Mahathala. I got tenters. <laughs> And the other man. <laughs> Look, it's true. Well, if there says, uh, I guess I technically I ain't got a name anymore. Uh, well, a lot of us ain't been willing to go into the ring for much that we haven't known isn't going to be safe. Nothing that Santa Claus is setting us up for. You know, everyone's going in there's dying. Why did he but keep going in? Now we haven't really. Much of the coin I've had to get from Button. That's how I lost my name. I'm just face now. I'm sorry, what? Face, like you with the face. Yes, but like, why? How, how do you lose your name in a bet? I have my chosen to bet, honestly. It's gone a little better since then, of course. I got, I got a purse now, but it was not a proud day. And it was only two weeks ago. Very ripe in the mind. Well, but I guess can't believe you killed the thing. Why would she do that? Hungry? Blood makes money. No, I, I mean, what's the point of using up all of your best fighters, the ones that entertain the crowd? Because and, uh, the blood of spilt gladiators Lifter brings kinda in money. Shrugs. This is a toil day. This isn't even the big show. This is the midweek. You hear how many people are out there in the stands? They got them dams near full. The kind of fans are eating it up, honestly. I mean, they're making money hand over fist out there. I don't blame them at all. I don't really know. What is this money getting reinvested back into the guild? Where's it all going? Uh, well, most of the people that are left are sponsored fighters, really. That have some noblemen putting them in for name and glory and whatnot. But is it all just going to the guild master's pockets? Well, we get a have we get our purses for winning. What the arms master's gonna have for you here in a minute? They make decent enough coin. You're getting what fifteen hundred for standing up to Dune Shaker. 
That's riches. It's not like we have to go in there that often. Well, Look, sick. most of us fight three, four bouts a year, as long as we're winning them. We're sitting pretty. That's a fair, uh, a fair shake less work than most men in Catapesh are putting in. Oh, that's a fair that's point. That's actually a fair point. Hmm. It's not like we ain't paid well. But I mean, I guess the guild's kind of figured out they ain't got to pay dead men no more. And not to fill seats faster than known faces getting ripped to pieces. Hmm. Hmm. I, I Look, the people don't... don't want to see much more than those that have been on a 10 year winning streak ripped down to the bloody sands. I hmm. I don't really understand that logic, but I believe you. It's a heartless city, it seems. Look, when you got a purse this big, any man off the street's willing to come in and take his hand and swing at a sword. That was what happened the first time they brought Dune Shaker out. In about five seconds. That's 1500 for all of, for, for like total, right? No, oh, yeah, for the group of you. Still. It'll be fine. Well, you, could, you could buy a house with half of that. And uh, around that time, the arms master comes back down with a pretty large purse. All right, as promised, 150 platinum pieces. And just tosses it towards Rasheen, who is the sturdiest looking, most undamaged person of the party. Untouched, in fact. The thing never looked at me. I am also untouched. Hey. Look, that was a damn sight impressive. <laughs> one welcome to come back here whenever you want to show your faces. Heroes of Breach Jail are going to be a known name through the streets for weeks to come. You don't have any other of those dune shakers around in the vaults down there, do you? Heck no, we got nothing. That was that was the thing. That was the big one. That was the, the killer. Aw. I mean, we got <laughs> I'm so disappointed, please. The Union of Reapers <laughs> brings in weird things to fight. Oh, damn near monthly at this point. But dune shaker is certainly one of the, the biggest things they've managed to bring in in recent memory. Uh, but that said, there's nothing that can't be solved with making a fight a half dozen of them. Or, besides, I imagine, no, I don't, I don't pit the fights, but worry to come back, I'm sure the guildmaster would have half a mind to put you against, I don't know, bully blades or something. Hmm. So telepathic. Scimitars. Is, uh, I'm going to ask Resme, uh, do you think it's a good idea to leave that name out as an insult to the Scarlet Triad, or should we change it? No, I think at this point we're best served by being intimidating. The Bloody Blades. Uh, I heard their name about a bit. Uh, tell me about them, if you don't mind. Oh, they're uh, my best performers right now, I think. Where'd they come uh, from? I don't know. I set the fights and carried the purses. I work with the talent. I've shown them in a couple of times, but they're, uh, you know, Kalakangs. Hmm. What a what? Kalakangs. They're, uh... I don't know if a tribe is the right word. The last thing I want to do is defend the Bloody Blades. Uh, they, I know they come from further inland than Catapish. They're like, yeah, you know, you ever seen the big hulking purple men with four arms? Calicans. I can't really say that I have, but it sounds interesting enough. Um, you can make me... It would not be impossible that you've seen them through a Catapish. Make me a knowledge check if you want to throw one down. Like society? Society, society okay. they're just humanoids. Hey, I'll do it too. It's a very cocked die. Uh, that's a 30. Um, I got a 36. <laughs> both of you would be somewhat familiar. Uh, you, at least at least talking about, you would maybe have recognized a couple that you've seen in the streets here. First of all, he's wrong. They have six arms. Uh, but apparently he's not really here to count. <laughs> um, but he has the money. They, you know, he has the pre-made purses. Oh, <laughs> Someone handed him yeah, money and say. he brought it out. He had to go get the purse ready. Sorry, I was about to start counting the money because if, if he's thinking four and it's six, you know. Raz, Raz has already counted it. It's already but counted. But they are, uh, you, you would know, both of you, that they are, well, you wouldn't really know much about them, obviously, it's the first time you've probably heard the name. But you would have probably seen them in town at least somewhat. They're fairly rare, but not completely unheard of. They really are enormous, maybe 11 foot tall on average, giant purple skinned men with six arms. Huh. Um, they typically okay. wear heavily visored masks or helms that obscure their faces. So you would never have seen the face of any of them, but they are like a, uh, a sentient near humanoid race. As, as far as you can tell, you have of the couple that you've seen throughout town, you've never seen one that does not look like it is purely made of muscle. Um, they are massive, brutish creatures. But again, not ones that you would know much about. You would, with the 36, seeing how they carry themselves and how they move, 
Uh, the concept of trying to manipulate six arms simultaneously sounds difficult. Uh, it is a, I mean, obviously doing things with both of your hands at the same time is fairly hard. Uh, something it's easy to remember, we're all nerd gamers here. Something as simple as using a controller is literally not intuitive at all. Yeah. It took Bryn forever to figure out. She still doesn't really understand two joysticks. Yeah, Using me neither. both your hands in tandem is this really is difficult. This is really difficult. And just seeing them, um, just the way they move, uh, they move about in town, they seem to be able to move all six arms with perfect functionality, with no difficulty whatsoever. You know, you're relatively certain from what like it looks like they could literally do six different tasks with them at once with no real challenge. <laughs> they are spectacularly built and spectacularly coordinated. These Why aren't they all short order cooks? <laughs> the great they could run restaurants forever. I mean, That's, she's not wrong. You're not, no, you're not wrong. Holy I'm crap. I'm prep. I'm cook. I'm expo. I got it all, What baby. are you doing in the Why arena? Go we, open a freaking restaurant. Like, seriously. Make more money. It's safer. Two of them. One runs the whole kitchen. One runs the whole dining room. It's then perfect. They're just doing six different things at once, taking orders in place, and we're like... Bussing <laughs> tables. <laughs> and walk by. Can you imagine writing down three different orders all at the same time? See, then the problem is you have to mentally be participate in yeah, three different conversations. Say, that That's the harder part. Yeah. Well, you can probably listen. write down three different things at once, but then engaging in three conversations simultaneously may be a different thing. But the concept of... Six years. <laughs> well, one thing that really struck you when you were just, just seeing them about in town is that you probably would not want to fight one, and the Bloody Blades being a team of Calicangs, so, well, it's understandable why they're probably the Gladiators Guild's top performers, really. Uh, it makes button. immediate sense to you. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> If you say that out loud, the uh, armsman's like, uh, oh. all right, well, you, you beat Doomshaker. So honestly, I'm through underestimating the lot of you. I'm not going to put anything past you. So it's, the, gu it's the guild master who goes <laughs> and makes the uh, makes the selections, does it? Well, you were nothing. So I just kind of, you, you didn't look like totally nothing. You got fine armor and weapons. You look like, you know, what runes and spells are. It looked like you'd have to chew a few times before so it I swallowed. So I put you into Dune Shake, right, fully right, right. expecting you to die horrifically and immediately. You probably uh, do that but, a lot, actually. But figured you put on at least a good 15 seconds of show, maybe, uh, which is more than he usually gets. I did not expect you to kill him. The I Those who show up day of uh, or don't have much of a pedigree behind them, if you just kind of show in talking to me, I'm going to slot you in where you are. But, uh, I don't know, uh, if you don't have an organizer? Uh, the bird will pop up. You have a bookie? No, no, that's me. I'm the organizer. Are you serious? No. We're dead serious. No. Yes. We don't listen to the bird. We only listen to the bird because you're a moron. I'll just eat you. I do not think I have ever taken a single thing that you have said and obeyed. That's you have an what... agent. Yeah, I'm the agent. You the, speak to me. You're the eight, th this bird is the, your agent and your organizer? Well, yeah. No. And your bookie? Well, maybe. No. Might as well be. I just keep all the money. Just, just go with it. It makes them happy. Look, if y'all are insane enough to try and fight the blood and blades, uh, I mean, I would say have your bird guy <laughs> get in contact with the guild, and I mean, that's not impossible. I'll I don't make know the if right one connections. fight's really going to put you in, the, in that kind of a standing. Uh, truth be told, we, we had it scheduled in, not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday, they were going to kill the Dune, the Dune Shaker after we figured he'd kind of lived his welcome. But I guess we're going to have to find something else for them to do. Uh, I mean, in all honesty, I think throwing them up against something more mob-like next time could be very entertaining. Oh, uh, well, sometimes on, on these 12-day shows, we do just have, uh, we call it the 5v50 where we take just uh well we have a contract with a uh, mercantile company out in Kadira across the sea and uh, they send us a bunch of recruits they don't really like and the bloody blades chop them to pieces it's, I mean in all oh, honesty like in all honesty if you could round up some you know medium sized beasties get about 20 25 in there ones with big teeth and such I think these all, uh, that could be very entertaining. Look, no, I, I no longer like our organizer. I don't, <laughs> Hold on, uh, hear about this time. I don't do the organized fights, I just do the walk-ins. But... I'll get with your... <laughs> that's a hell of an introduction for the Heroes of Breach. I thought it was a pretty stupid name when I wrote it down, but... It's, well, it's, it's gonna stick now. It's a really stupid name. It is not a stupid name. No, be quiet, rat. It, I mean, it's true, we're heroes. He wrote his name. Breach Hill. Anyway, uh, anyway... Press the dissertation the ink off anyway. the page. I got more stuff to run. That was just... I can't believe it. I was watching. 
don't know. I would say. What do you would, think, but... tigers? Well, anyway, I appreciate the the help and the info, and uh, we'll have our bird talk to the guildmaster about the next fight. Till then, I believe it's time for a drink. We have a party to attend to. Indeed. The group of you having emerged victorious against the mighty Dune Shaker and only pooping your pants a little in the first couple rounds. I, I don't know. Sir, I'm wearing a kilt. I was doing bad. <laughs> well, I don't like that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a giant size at the time. <laughs> Emerge, this victorious. goes back to the beta conversation. Uh, the gladiators <laughs> arena, and we're not talking about it anymore. <laughs> the cleanup crew will take care of it. Next oh, week. Man. Sam's a little gritty this week. Next. <laughs> next week. We return. You don't, you don't like. Well, we jokes? may not have brought the gladiators guild around, but we've made a hell of an impression. Oh, man. That was That's definitely a solid first step on the road, but there are many more on this list we're going to need to uh, tend to, and we have plenty of time here in Catapult. Oh, yeah, we got to change our clothes. But not forever. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for yes, hanging thank out. thank you. Bye. You guys Two have been wonderful. Weeks and a day on the calendar until the Council of Guilds. <laughs> 74 wolves? That's a great a idea. What? Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>